Inspired by Roll for Sandwich from Adventures in Ardia, today I'm going to be building a PC with absolutely no idea what parts are going inside. The dice will do all the deciding for me. But there is a catch. Whatever PC I end up building, I will sell to one of you for one dollar. There are a couple of ways that I can tilt the scales in my favor. First, I can take an advantage, which means I get to roll two dice and take the more favorable outcome. But that will cost me one heaping tablespoon of cheese whiz. Second, I am allowed one reroll, but that will cost me a spoonful of really terrifying hot sauce. I really don't know if I want to take that path. I might feel like I have to, though, because while the best case scenario for me is about $370 all in on the PC, the worst case scenario for me is, according to Alex, who set up this nightmare. Oh, what do you think? What do you think? Do you want to know? One guess. One guess. $5,000. Sixteen thousand Six seven hundred and ninety-five. Sixteen thousand dollars. That's more like seventeen. Sixteen thousand dollars. Sixteen you, seven nine. You couldn't even spend sixteen thousand dollars with our sponsor, Build Redux. <laughs> <laughs> build Redux makes it easy to configure your new build with support guides and competitive pricing compared to building a PC yourself. Head to buildredux.com slash Linus to start your new build today. Let's kick things off by having a quick look at some of the options for what could go into our machine. Let's head over to Andrew here. For power supplies, we've got everything from this Antec Neo Eco that I'm fairly sure was obtained during Scrapyard Wars at some point. Approximate value $8. All the way up to this Seasonic Prime TX 1600, a $575 power supply. We've got coolers all the way from the Intel stock cooler. I'm really going to be... I, one in D&D is usually bad, right? You know, natural one, bad. Okay, well, I'm really hoping for... That's a natural one for you if you end up with that cooler. I'm hoping for that one. We've got storage all the way from like ancient beat up. Oh my goodness. This is a shingled, shingled <laughs> hard drive. You do not want that as a boot drive. So we've got everything from shingled storage up to an eight terabyte NVMe SSD from Sabrent that is worth a whopping 1500 US dollars. Uh, we've got combos from Ryzen Threadripper to, oh, we've got a Ryzen 7 over here, all the way down to an AMD FX 8350, the CPU that almost destroyed AMD. <laughs> oh my goodness, these monitors though. Uh, you might want to go, you might want to go back around, Andrew. Not too fast, don't give them motion sickness. Oh, GPUs. My goodness, have we ever got a lot of options for GPUs. Uh, 8800 GTS, all the way up to an RTX 4090 Supreme, one of the hottest cards on the market right now. My understanding is these are like, cannot be kept in stock. And then for monitors, we've got an Odyssey Neo G9, an Apple Studio display, the Dell UltraSharp 8K. Things about to get wild. Of course, we're going to kick it off, though, with the case. Why don't I show you all of our options for cases, and we will do our first roll. Only six choices. First up is the Silverstone Primera PM01. The approximate value is $180. And the only really remarkable thing about this case is the giant unicorn on the side panel. What do you think? You guys want case number one? Case number one? How you, how you feeling about it? Well, you haven't seen case number two yet. This is a Sun Microsystems whoop, Ultra 24 workstation chassis. Oh, yeah. The approximate value is $130, and that's with a quad core processor in it and two gigs of RAM. <clears throat> this was a, a really high end workstation back in uh, 2007. 
Uh, the case has features like limited airflow, um, metal edges that will cut you, uh, complete lack of front I.O. You want to come have a look at this delightful front I.O.? Oh yeah, empty firewire ports. Very nice. And you might have to drill out rivets if you end up with a large GPU. But it looks kind of sick, okay? Which is why we considered an upgrade over the PM01. Next up, I can't believe this thing is still kicking around. We've got the Carbide 600C from Corsair. Um, dropped in 2016 and was loved for its massive side window and three included fans. Reviewers didn't appreciate the appliance-like exterior and the use of plastics, uh, but we still think it's an upgrade over either of these because of the <clears throat> hand-painted by yours truly, Duck Hunt themed front panel. Next up, Number four, we've got the Azacast 808 with an approximate value of 250 bucks. It has a sick gullwing door design. Uh, that is the only reason it's here from the Hardware Canucks review. It's not really an enclosure I would recommend at this price point um, with all the color inconsistencies, the frustrating assembly, and the lack of access behind the motherboard tray for all your cable management. Also, um, like there's no protection from dust whatsoever. It's hardly even a case. See, look, it's not a window. It's more of a door. <laughs> Next up, we've got an Asus Strix Helios White Edition. This is what we're going to use if I roll a five. Loads of RGB, well thought out layout with cable management provisions, great cooler compatibility. Probably the best case here, but it's not the top case. And the reason for that is because we pulled out something really special if I happen to roll a six. This is the Case Labs Mercury S8 with an approximate value of $900. This is the original case from seven gamers, one CPU, the first video on LTT to ever pull a million views in 24 hours. It was a breakout hit for us with coverage from mainstream news sites. And I've actually held on to this for a couple of reasons. One, for sentimental value, and two, because Case Labs isn't around anymore and there's actually no way to replace this beauty. It's got a ton of accessories that come with it because Case Labs sent over a decked out build for it. And uh, from the review by Extreme Rigs, the question this case asks is why buy anything else if you can afford it? I love this thing. I don't really want to give it away, so I'm hoping not to roll a six. Alex! Where's my six-sided die? I see, uh, oh, what, what die set should we use? It's up what, to you. I don't yeah, know. What, no, no, let's, let's let the people decide. Let's let the people decide. Oh, first I should tell you guys how to interact with the stream today. So we don't really do like Twitch bits or hype trains or, or uh, what, what are they called on YouTube? Super chats or anything like that. You want merch messages. When we are live, you can check out on lttstore.com and there should be a field to send a merch message. Those will be curated by our producer, Dan and he will let me know what you guys are sending in. Dan, I wanna try and stay kinda on top of them today rather than doing them in batches because people may have some feedback on how things are going as we go. I think that I haven't really given you guys enough notice to choose the dice, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose this delightful silver and bronze set. I'm, I'm feeling this one. Yeah, those are my favorite too. It's got a, it's got a good vibe, it's got a good vibe. Here, can I, uh, can I hand those off sure. to you? Oh, thank you so much. All right, Whew. not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous. $16,000 is the maximum damage More today? More like 17. More like 17, thank you. That's really helpful, Alex, I appreciate that. Okay, where's our, uh, where's our dice cam? Do we, have, do we have a die cam? All right, uh, Andy, do you, wanna, do you wanna take me? Andy, uh, let's go to Andy. And then Andrew, you're gonna be on, let's have our, our screwdriver from ltdstore.com in the shot here. All right, die cam. Here we go, for case three. Okay, it looks like you're getting the Duck Hunt special from Scrapyard Wars. Alex, do you wanna uh, clear out the rest of these? Was this oh, from certainly. Scrapyard Wars or from Tech Showdown? I can't remember, but there's a video where I built it and the theme was retro, pixels, pixels. The theme was pixels. And I also have a Pong game that is uh, <clears throat> sort of happening on the side here. Uh, do we have other helpers to help us like uh, clear out the, the ones that didn't 
get yep. get drawn or anything like that. Awesome. Let's go ahead. And I, I don't think I'm going to re-roll. I don't think I need an advantage. I'm pretty happy with this choice. But I think it's time for us to move on to our next component. What was it you had in mind next? Probably I was thinking motherboard. Motherboard CPU. All right. Let's go, Andrew. Chase, you're on feeding or, OK, Alex is on that. All right, Duck Hunt, let's go. Not bad. Uh, oh, how many, how many sided died? Oh, I need a dodecahedron. Uh, do you mind throwing me the die container, please? Awesome. All right, now I'm not actually a D&D &D player, so you'll have to forgive me. I may not immediately recognize which dice are appropriate for which number of sides I need, but I'm pretty sure I need this one. Mm, nope, that's 12. Crap. <laughs> This is embarrassing. Uh, uh, this appears to be 10 sided, right? Yes. It's uh, from 10, from 0 to 90. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. We good? We good? All right. Uh, is, there, is there like an alternate way to do that? Is there another 10 sided? Oh, yeah, yeah, here. Here, no, no, no. We've got, we've got a different 10 sided die. Here we go. That's it. All right. Don't roll it first. Should I? Don't roll. Oh, oh, right. So wait. You need to I... tell them what. what oh your yeah, I gotta are. tell them. Tell them all the options. One is the Crosshair Five formula with an AMD FX eighty three fifty, and I bet Alex didn't check this. Do you know if this has bent pins? No. Okay. There was an incident a number of years back where we actually dropped our entire two trays of AMD CPUs and APUs. Do you know about this? No. Okay, we dropped all of them. And nobody has noticed that we didn't fix them after all these years because none of the CPUs from AMD of those eras matter at all. And we've never needed to test them for anything. <laughs> so there's actually a solid chance that this thing has pins on it that are bent to hell and we're going to have to repair it before we put it in the socket. You know what? Not bad. There's a little bit of a bend right here, but I think I can probably jam that into the socket without making any significant changes to it. Okay, good. Well, that's a good sign. Um, this is a sick motherboard. Unfortunately, it's from 2012, and it's paired with an original AMD FX CPU, an eight-core processor with lower IPC than a toaster. Um, <laughs> what? Alex writes, recently I've seen some AMD fanboys try and say Bulldozer wasn't that bad. Yeah. You are wrong. This thing is terrible now, and it was terrible then. Uh, <laughs> Reroll if you get it. Is there any way they can force me to reroll? No, so that's from when you were going to be using this computer. Oh, that's when I was rooting for it to be good. Yes. Ah, yes. So I am very much hoping for a one here. Next up. Oh, this isn't too bad. We've got an Intel Core i7-4790K and a Maximus 6 Hero motherboard. This is a beast from 2014 that has started to show its age, but is still capable of a pretty decent gaming experience as long as you don't run into a situation where you're trying to play a game that requires, for example, an instruction set that the CPU simply does not support. It'll still rip, though, for all but the newest games. Then, wow, we've actually got, holy crap, the chances of me giving away something really good for CPU is really high, Alex. Yeah, this wasn't a balanced for oh my goodness. you giving it away. Number three already is a Ryzen 5 1600X and a budget AM4 motherboard. Um, honestly, the better value here is probably that motherboard since you can upgrade to newer CPUs. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not, not, a, not a terrible option. And then we get into some pretty nice stuff. <laughs> nice. Like the Core i7-6900K and an Asus Prime X299 Edition 30 motherboard. That's right. This is from 2016, back when Intel still made high-end desktop processors before AMD came in and made them completely irrelevant with Threadripper. The approximate value of this is $150 for the CPU and $400 for the motherboard. I can explain that. Motherboards, used high-end motherboards, tend to hold their value extremely poorly, then extremely well because CPUs don't really die, and motherboards do. So individuals who are looking to continue using their machine and just do a motherboard swap will often pay quite a bit of money for a new motherboard. Are you, uh, 
Is someone worked on doing something here? Okay, uh, cool. Uh, good job, Dan. Uh, all right, next up. If I roll a five for an approximate value of $384, I will get a Core i3, but a 12th gen Core i3, which is gonna make this a pretty capable gaming rig, as long as you're not playing anything that requires more than four performance cores at a speed of 4.3 gigahertz. Oh, if I roll a six, I'm on the hook for a $2,000 Threadripper 2990WX, a 32 core? Yeah. A 32 core Threadripper and an Aorus TRX40 Master motherboard. In many ways, this is the best processor here by a mile. You better just hope you get a good cooler. Otherwise, it is going to thermal throttle like nobody's business, and we might have to zap strap it on. And I'm not, we're not cheating here. We're not cheating. If we roll it, we roll it. Next up, at seven, for an approximate value of $483, we've got the i7-11700K, okay, Rocket Lake. Not incredible for its time, but absolutely a capable gaming CPU. And then an MSI Meg Z590 motherboard. At eight, we have a Ryzen 7 5700X and ASRock B550 board. That's around 550 bucks. This is an excellent, excellent CPU. Um, basically capable of anything you'd want to do. Only 65 watts, eight core, 16 threads. And then we get really interesting. Here's another 8-core 16-thread combo, but this one's worth almost a grand. Why? Because it's Ryzen 7. Absolutely brand spanking new, sealed box, brand new CPU, and it can be yours if I roll a 9. Finally, number oh, 10. One thing to note, though, that board is covered in Vaseline. The board has the Vaseline? Yeah. Oh, um, well, that makes it go faster, right? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's speed lube. <laughs> Finally, if I roll a 10, you get a Core i9-13900K and an MSI Meg Z790. This is worth over a G. Eight performance cores, 16 efficiency cores, 5.8 gigahertz max. If you're a gamer, this is the fastest possible. Well, either of these actually are the fastest options. And then uh, things kind of fall off from there. Where'd that die go? Where's my die at? Okay, Andrew, let's go, let's go. Just got my COVID all over it. Is COVID over? Can we make COVID jokes now? Four. What's four? Oh, okay. Eight cores, 16 threads. Approximate value of $550. All right, that's not so bad. What am I up to right now, Alex? Are you going to keep a running total of uh, everything that I've spent over the course of the stream? I guess I probably should. Okay. Yeah. That seems like a pretty cool idea. Let's go ahead and get our CPU installed, and then we're going to go over and roll for a cooler. What do you guys think? Um, did my laptop ever make its way back over here so that I can have a little bit of a closer look at our... Oh, I mean, I guess the chats are over there. Heck yeah. All right, Floatplane seems pretty happy with the roll. 69. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. We get it, guys. Uh, you got to click more messages below, Dan, on the float plane one. Otherwise, I won't be able to see it. Right. Oh, he's he's on the other side of the room trying to operate. Yeah, yeah, you're going oh, down. Oh, down, down, uh, down. Now you're going up, down, up, there. Yes. There we go. All right. Oh, oh, crap. We got the wrong thing. I that's a zero to nine die. Oh wait, no, but zero would be 10, right? Yeah. yeah, no, 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 guys, a four is a four. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, 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 okay. <laughs> guys messing with me. Zero is 10, you guys. All right, man, it's been a little while since I've installed an LGA 2066 socket CPU. Uh, lift up the one arm, lift up the other arm. You're going to be on this, Andrew. All right, Andrew's my close-up cam. And you know what? We should actually change sides. Sure. And Andy, do you want to do you want to grab me? Oh, well, and switch to Andy. Whenever, yeah, whenever we get into motion sickness territory, we should definitely. Uh, 
what was the plan for where I'm going to stand for this? Are we just, yeah, sure, let's do that. Okay, head to, head to my close-up then. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys, I've never done this before. We're new to live streaming. We're new to, new to YouTube. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and pop this boy in here. There we go. Just got to line up our notches. Ooh. Uh, that is, wait a second. X299 and 6000 series. Uh, Alex, these are not compatible. What? Um, I believe X299 was a 7000 series. Are they? Oh, do I need to get an X199 oh, board? Crap. Um, no, we should get a different CPU. Oh, geez, you're gonna really pop up the price then. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, how about the nice? Um. All right, well, I'll go and upgrade it for you. We're getting an even nicer CPU. I guess while Alex is finding something. Okay, things are about to get a little spicy here. I guess while Alex is finding something, Andrew and I are gonna head over and roll for our cooler. How many die sides do I need for that? Well, first, let's have a look at what our options are here. The Intel stock cooler is free. It has seven blades of insufficiency and a rated TDP of 50 watts. Ooh. Then at number two, things get really interesting. These, this Phononic, Phononic Hex 2.0 CPU cooler has a six pin power connector on the side of it. Why, you might ask? because it actually has an integrated thermoelectric cooling element that takes it to a rated TDP of beyond 140 watts, in theory. In practice, its performance is uh, about the same as a regular tower air cooler, except it's louder and consumes a bunch of power. <laughs> hey, Next. Linus. Yeah. They're saying to re-roll for the CPU and motherboard. They think I should have to re-roll. They think you should have to re-roll. They're saying it's uh, scammed and rigged. It's scammed and rigged. Scammed and rigged, you say? I'll show you scammed and rigged. All right, I'm taking an advantage then. If you're gonna make me re-roll it, then I'm gonna roll two dice. You just wait here, Andrew. All right. Oh my God, I haven't. Ooh. I have not consumed willingly cheese whiz. They're saying I have to re-roll it. If we're gonna change the parameters, they say I have to re-roll it. So we can put it back in as an option. I, okay, I, I disagree. Linus is losing here by this CPU being what we use instead. Well, only the viewers can decide. Are you gonna allow me to re-roll knowing that I'm gonna take an advantage and roll two dice? Or what? do you accept Alex's offer of a 7900X in the Wait, machine? Now they're doing? backtracking. They're, they're saying, they're saying I'm, I have to re-roll it. I'm saying, look, if I'm going to re-roll this, I'm taking an advantage. Well, but if you're re-rolling it, you have to have the hot sauce. Re no, no, they're telling me to re-roll it. I don't want to. Now they don't want you to re-roll. Now they don't want me to re-roll. Yeah, no, it's a 7900X. This is a much better processor. This thing's like 400 bucks. All right. Okay. Okay, all right. Let's continue going through our cooler options then. At three, we've got the Hyper 212 Evo. Decent single tower cooler. It's a budget staple. Kind of sucks to install though. I don't really want to put the time into it. This is what you want, okay? 80 bucks, NHU 12S Chromax Black. It's a single tower cooler, way easier to install. Yeah, it's twice the price of the... Uh, Hyper 212 Evo, but it is a lot easier to install, and I don't want to waste a bunch of time today. You got your time's very valuable. Here you are, sitting at your computer, eating snacks. You know, you got a lot going on. <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. All right, next up at five, we've got the Kraken X42 with a retail value of 120 bucks. Pretty decent looking. Um, Looks nice and cools good. Unexpected for something named after a Lovecraftian horror. <laughs> I am, oh, crack it. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I thought it was like NZXT. Sorry, what? Uh, next up, at six, we've got the Montech Metal DT24. Uh, it claims, Montech claims it is the best value. Okay. At $69. I will say it's a nice value. 
that I'll say. Roll set. If I roll seven, you get an NHD 14. The king, the legend, fear its jaggy spikes. And oh my goodness, we have 10 options for coolers. At number eight, we have this Aorus dual 140 millimeter liquid cooler. The approximate value is only $69, really? I feel like it's supposed to be $169. Yeah, it should be $169. We've also got an ROG Ryujin 360 right here. This is valued at about $300. At $300. This is apparently Tony Hawk's favorite cooler. Is this a joke that I don't get? Uh, Adam wrote these, actually. Adam clear. wrote these. All right, thanks, Adam. I'm I'm sure there's like a skate joke in there that I'm that is going way over my He's head. The first to do the 900. And finally, oh, the first to do the 900. That makes sense because how many uh, revolutions he did, which was a very revolutionary thing. Ha. Huh. Uh, then we've got the Pro Siphon Elite. Approximate value $170. This bad boy has two cooling phases. In all seriousness, though, that's a freaking great cooler. You are hoping for a 10, a 9, an 8, a 7. I don't know anything about this one, but they say it's really good. So a 6, a 5, a 4. I am going for a 3, maybe a 4. So one thing about the coolers, you're going to roll two dice. What? Why? Just for compatibility's sake. There's a chance that you get a cooler here that just simply won't fit on your motherboard. I see. And which is the like master die? The 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 one numbered one? Uh, you just pick whichever one's you know compatible. Oh uh, my choice. Yeah, your choice. Okay. Uh, where's my uh, dice can? Here we go. Uh, I feel like I should, no, I feel like we should re-roll if it's not compatible. Okay. Yeah, I, th sure. I think it should, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. Six. Montec. Uh, hmm. It would actually surprise me if this has LGA, nope, <laughs> incompatible. This is a new cooler. No LGA 2011 compatibility, at least nothing listed on the box. Although it is compatible with the newest sockets, so you're out. Okay. I mean, I guess I have to say it. And there's the re-roll. You know. So it's no six. Six is out. Seven. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, so I'm giving away an NHD 14. 90 bucks. Add it to the tally. This is almost certainly compatible. This is certainly compatible because uh, Noctua has lots of easy to acquire mounting kits. They will actually send one to you for free. And we have plenty of them kicking around the office. That gives us enough components to go ahead and get this build started. Then we're going to go and roll for our RAM as soon as I'm done installing the CPU and cooler. One of you is going to want to switch sides here because uh, one, but not both. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Sorry guys, like I said, we're we're new to live streaming. We've never done this before. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead. Uh, this is an engineering sample CPU. Hopefully uh, Intel never wants it back. So that's hilarious. There you go. Yep, that's actually compatible. So that worked out great for you guys. 7900X, that's still... Wait, is that a 10 core instead of an 8 core? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't remember how many cores the 7900X had. It might yeah. be just eight. The Either... processors made no sense. 12! 12. 12 core CPU Wait, no, now. that's AMD. Oh. Um... <laughs> yeah, don't you love that AMD and Intel use the same freaking numbers for numbering their products? I, I love that. It's really helpful. All right, let's go ahead and get this cooler installed. 10 cores. 10 cores. All right, my memory did serve me well. These things are super comical when you overclock them, too. They just keep on going. Uh, Floatplane Chat says, YouTube needs a merch message reminder. Yes, merch message reminder. So the way to send messages into the stream is through merch messages. Uh, you go on lttstore.com, and in the checkout, you will see a field for merch messages. Uh, Dan, our producer today, will curate them and read out the ones that I need to respond to. Hey, Dan, have we had any so far? 
Yeah, we got a couple here. Shall okay. we do one? I want to try and stay on top of those. So feel free to, to interrupt and let me know when we've got merch messages. All right, I got one here. Uh, Linus, what are your thoughts on the Intel Evo Platform laptops? Are there any plans to test laptops such as the Evo Platinum Forms in the future? Well, okay. I definitely have some thoughts on the Evo Platform. It seems like Intel is trying to, uh, trying to introduce a strong laptop platform brand like they had with Centrino back in the in the early 2000s. Uh, there was a period, guys, where not only did AMD not have a competitive laptop product, but even if they had, I feel like Intel's branding for their Centrino platform was so strong that AMD probably couldn't have sold anything anyway. And it was a combination of things. So the Centrino platform was a CPU, and I believe at the time it was a codename Banyas Core 2 Duo based processor, or Core might have been Core Duo, might have been before Core 2. Um, so it was a it was a, a, a highly efficient Intel's first non net burst architecture in quite some time, a highly efficient CPU, an accompanying chipset. Remember, this was back in a time when you could actually buy third party chipset motherboards for processors, or at least you had been able to in recent memory. Um, so it also used an Intel chipset. And in my opinion, probably most importantly, you were not allowed to put Centrino branding on your product unless it used an Intel Wi-Fi module. Back in the early to mid 2000s, Wi-Fi, believe it or not, was even crappier. Uh, let's go to the close up so people can follow along with the build. We're just putting on some thermal co compound. This is, I don't know what this is. It's um, definitely not a penis, though. It's not a Starforge logo. Um, sorry, excuse me. Uh, so back then, believe it or not, Wi-Fi was even worse. And the only maker of a decent Wi-Fi chipset was pretty much Intel. So if you bought a Centrino, because a lot of the time, laptop manufacturers would jerk you around, right? And they would try to get away with, you know, putting a, a crappy, cheaper Wi-Fi module in, but they weren't allowed to put that Centrino sticker on their product unless it used an Intel Wi-Fi module. So it was a way of ensuring that you were going to have decent Wi-Fi performance. Is it the black ones? It's these ones, yeah. It's the black ones. All right. Save us some time. I was just, uh, I was just checking, just checking, just checking, just making sure. As for Evo, I think that Intel has their work cut out for them. I don't think the brand message is as strong. I don't think the differentiation of their Evo products is as clear as what they had with, uh, with Centrino. Uh, you can tell they're trying to go for a pretty similar idea where it's these, uh, these sort of Intel validated or Intel approved designs. But I don't, I don't necessarily think that consumers were asking for that, whereas with Centrino, they really were. People were really asking for, it was all about decent performance, solid battery life, and wait a second. Do I not need spacers? You don't need the spacers. Oh, I don't need the spacers, oh cool. It was all about decent performance, strong battery life, and reliable wireless. That was a really, really compelling, easy to understand message for consumers. And I just don't think they have a similar message today, I guess is the bottom line. I want to hop in on this for a second. Oh, what's up? I think Intel's biggest problem with laptops is that Apple's just better right now, mostly because of Windows. Windows completely screws them over by just having terrible management of the battery and that's fair. completely just destroying the experience. I, uh, I'm using the XPS 15 right now, but I've been using a MacBook lately because oh, Alex. I hate this thing. The, la the last time that we streamed, I really needed my computer so I could do work, and it was dead, and I had charged it the night before. I took it on my backpack, and I was like, I'm not using this laptop anymore. I'm done. I've had, I get it. I've had the MacBook for two weeks. I charged it for the first time last night. Yep. Yep. And given that 90% of what we do is in a Chrome window anyway, um, there's yep. really something to be said for that good battery life. Oops. Microsoft, fix modern standby. I will actually murder you. Whoa. Not actually. Whoa, aggressive. I don't think you're allowed to say that on Twitch. No. I don't I know if not. you're allowed to say that on Floatplane. 
slide on there. It's going to be for enter, it's going to be for giveaway that enters. What? YouTube thinks you have to enter <laughs> the giveaway by typing something into chat? Are people clear, spreading lies in YouTube chat? To be clear, not a giveaway. Yeah, it's not a giveaway. It can't be a giveaway, legally speaking, because if it's a giveaway, then there's all kinds of like lottery rules and like tax implications and all kinds of stuff. No, I am selling this computer. I'm just selling it for the price of a dollar which may be a good price, or it may be a very bad price, depending on how things go over the next hour or so. Let's Given the ahead. current values, about $1,040. We're at $1,040 already? I haven't yeah. even put a graphics card in this thing, Alex. Yeah, but uh, that processor was something else. How much did this CPU add? Uh, it's 400 bucks now. $400? Yeah. Jeez. OK. And that's what these things are still worth, like on eBay? Yeah. I Jeez. was quite shocked. I mean, I guess it's a 10 quart. Wait, what the crap? Does the does the the small one go in the middle? I didn't think so. You know what? I'm going with it. I'm going with it. This is how we're installing it. Well, I've got a suggestion here for you for you guys. Yep. From Shane. Should roll for the operating system. Ubuntu, Windows 8, Windows XP, roll Windows 7, operating system. Windows 10 Home, Windows 11 Pro. That's a cute idea, but I don't think we're going to roll for the operating system just because I don't want to deal with any incompatibility or anything like that. And yeah, that, that, that's a cool idea. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. That's what I'll say. All right, let's go ahead and get these two CPU fans installed here. And a one. And, oh my goodness, this is actually really tight clearance down here. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh no, is this not going to reach? What the crap? Are you serious right now, Noctua? Uh, this is not a compatibility problem. I think all I need is an extension. Uh, Alex, may I have a four-pin extension, please? You don't need an extension. No, I think I need an extension. I'm serious. There's no silicone pads on the other side, yeah, so I don't want to just turn it around and have it pulling. Oh, OK. Won't have the anti-vibrational properties of the NHD 14. No, we're not installing Temple OS Terrible Gamer. You should call yourself Terrible Idea instead of Terrible Gamer. I mean, you might also be a terrible gamer. You could call yourself Terrible Idea Gamer. Temple OS. Are they going to flip a coin for cable management or rat's nest? I'm kind of into it. Sure. I'm, I'm super into it. If I can save myself some effort just like jamming everything in here, I'm, I'm down. Should we do that now? And we'll do that after the power supply. After the power supply? Sure, yeah, we can do that. Or like as an add-on for our power supply rule. OK. Because we might not even get a modular power supply. Oh, man, that would be nasty. There we have it. So far, I'm in this for just over 1,000 US dollars. We've got a 7900X 10-core CPU. A Prime X299 motherboard complete with, oh, look at that, Thunderbolt, USB 3, 5 gig Ethernet. Wow, this was really, really high end when it came out. That's sick. It's got at least three M.2 slots, support for quad channel DDR4 memory. And we're going to be putting it in this magnificent Duck Hunt themed Corsair carbide. Uh, what was it, C600? I can't remember what the exact, Gra Graphite 600, wh whatever it is. Yeah, you got it. I don't even think I have all the screws for this thing. Nope, there's only one thumb screw in the side panel. Also, that's the back side panel. Sorry, one second. Oh, is this an inverted case? Yes. Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, all right, that'll add a little bit of challenge. Oh, boy. Ah, uh, nothing I can't handle. I want to give it a little dust off before we ship someone a container full of our dead skin cells, but I've seen much worse. Let's go ahead and roll for storage. What do you think? Because depending on what kind of storage we get, 
we might end up installing it on the motherboard before we install the motherboard in the case. Here's our options. Oh, we need to roll RAM too. Do you want to roll RAM and storage at the same time, guys? What do you think? Uh, echo, Dan, are you? Why on earth could there be echo? Uh, well, there's two mics, both of our labs. Okay, should I yeah. just be quiet for a second? I, I've just been uh, muting my mic ever since I saw Echo on the Okay, yeah, I don't think it's you though. Okay, one of these days, we are going to solve the Echo problem. Okay, apparently it's fixed now. Good. Do you guys want to roll storage and RAM at the same time, or should we roll one at a time and then install them? Let me know in the chat. Why don't I start walking you guys through? Let's do RAM. Oh, wait. There's only four options for RAM, Alex. Is there a four-sided? Oh, there is. There's a four-sided four -sided die. Uh, it's a pyramid. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, uh, oh, well, that's cute. Sure. So, oh, I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, again, not not a not a D and D player. We get eight gigs if I roll a one, sixteen gigs if I roll a two, thirty-two gigs if I roll a three, and sixty-four gigabytes of memory if I roll a four. All right, Andrew, you're my die cam. As for the uh, the speed or generation of memory, we're just going to pick something appropriate and compatible. All right, we ready? Ah, oh, crap. Uh, <laughs> whew. Not going to lie, lie, Alex, things are getting a little pricey. pricey. That's 64 uh, gigs. Oh, ouch. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I'll be back with 64 gigs of RAM. Huh. OK. Cool. Uh, Man, and I'm only allowed one reroll the whole time? Yeah. See, here's the thing. 64 gigs of DDR4 is actually still pretty freaking expensive, but that is nothing compared to how hard I'm going to get hit if I get an unfavorable GPU, which could be as much as 17, 1800 US dollars, not to mention what 4000 4000 dollars what GPU is 4,000 freaking dollars? Why did you put it here? What the hell is that doing here? Well, this isn't balanced around you giving it away. We decided that at the last second because you wanted stakes. You have stakes now. But this is a $4,800 GPU. Yes, it has two terabytes of VRAM. But it's not even a smart thing to have in a gaming PC. No, it's terrible to have in a gaming PC. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. Um, yeah, hit me with the 64 gigs of RAM. Do you want to run and grab that while I roll for storage? All right. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, the spoonful of hot sauce, that I can handle. But I do not want to deal with giving away a $4,800 GPU. Let's walk through our options for storage. Our cheapest storage option, valued at about 14 US dollars, is the Vasiki 256 gig V800 SSD. It's terrible. Low capacity, no cache, you don't want this. Next up, we've got a WD Red 2 terabyte worth approximately 50 bucks but designed for NAS use. Um, it's really not optimal for a boot drive. It'll be slow AF. Next up, ooh, this is a good combo. We've got a Crucial P2, 250 gig M.2 drive, plus a Seagate Barracuda 2 terabyte for bulk storage. This is valued at about $85. The classic SSD boot drive, hard drive, storage drive combo. Next up, we've got a Kingston KC 2500 500 gig NVMe SSD. It'll do for now, but you'll probably want a hard drive later. That's if I roll a four. If I roll a five, oh wow, this is where things are getting a little spicy. 
you guys are going to get an MP600 Pro Hydro X. This is a water cool cooling capable SSD. It's two terabytes. And why on earth is this Seagate eight terabyte archive drive valued at only $150, the six? Um, OK, it'll allow you to back up years of data to a single drive, but is an extremely poor choice for a boot drive due to its shingled magnetic platters. If I roll a seven, you will get the Sabrent Rocket 8 terabyte NVMe SSD. It has a capacity of, did I just say eight terabytes? Okay. It costs a whopping 1,500 US dollars. Makes no sense for that price, but man, is that ever a lot of fast storage. And finally, if I roll an eight, you will get an Intel Optane 905P. You will own a piece of history. Intel is discontinuing their Optane product, but that doesn't make these things not sick fast. Whew. All right. I guess I need an eight-sided die. Really, that's what you're going to go with? OK, 3200 CL16, uh, Intel XMP 2.0 ready, Trident ZRGB. That's our memory. What's, What's my, my approximate, approximate hit for that? I don't know. You don't 500 know. bucks, something like that? Something like that. Oof. OK, add it to the list. In the meantime, should I screw them over? Should I take an advantage on this one? You don't need an advantage here. You don't think I need an advantage here? If I get the Sabrin 8 terabyte, I do not, I don't want to eat the hot sauce. And I don't want to give away a $1,000 drive either. To be clear, not give away. Sell for a dollar. All right. Let's roll it. Four. Oh, we're going over to the cheap side. You get a Kingston KC2500 NVMe SSD. 500 gigs, which is plenty for now. Let's go ahead and install this on our motherboard. Yeah. One thing to note, uh, we aren't installing Windows on that or using it today because oh. we don't feel like installing Windows on a live stream. Oh, yeah, that doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, no one wants to watch us install games. So I'll actually use this guy over here. OK, cool. I'm going to go ahead and install this in the meantime, though, since uh, it will end up shipping with the actual system. You should be very glad that I didn't include this in there. Uh, I am very glad you didn't yeah. include that. That's a 30 terabyte drive that is worth how many thousands of dollars? Like 10, 10 grand or something yeah, 10 like grand. that? Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I guess. I, the rules are in place, and I actually don't want to give this away. I really like this. <laughs> it's so convenient. It's seven gigs a second forever. Uh, all right, yeah. Well, uh, I don't even know if we can use this thing, Alex. I don't think I have a U.2 port on this motherboard. Well, do you have a... Oh, you have an M.2 yeah, to U.2 adapter. Oh. Um, Perfect. Very handy. All right. I'm just going to need my M.2 mounting hardware. In the meantime, do you want to hit me with some super chats? And also, Dan, uh, I need you to hit the more messages below button, please. Can do. Oh, my goodness. Let's Look at the got packaging here. for this motherboard. How much was this thing when it was new? This is absolutely wild. Look at this. It comes with an outboard fan and RGB controller. This is absolutely wild. All these little storage compartments and stuff. This is amazing. This is like the best motherboard unboxing experience ever. Ah, good. There's my M.2 standoffs. Go ahead and pop that back in there. Uh, apparently, Alex is the source of the echo. So. That will affect our ability to have Alex mic'd until we can figure that out. Let me try right. a thing here. I did. Uh, I just looked it up. Go. The price of that motherboard new was seven hundred and fifty dollars. Wow. I don't know if you guys heard Alex, but the price of this motherboard brand new was apparently seven hundred and fifty dollars. Absolutely wild. All right, we're going to put the KC2500 here. You know what's kind of surprising? We've actually ended up with a pretty sensible machine so far. Like, 
Nothing here is too stupid. Some things are a little stupid, but nothing is too stupid. Yet. Yet. Oh, there's plenty of time. There's plenty of time for things to get very stupid. Let's go ahead and pop off this shield. Yeah, I got another message here from Anonymous Linus. Do you have any plans for making a thinner screwdriver? Loving the current version, but it does seem a bit too thick for some applications. Um, are you mic Dan? Like, do I have to repeat the question for people? You do not. I do not. Yes, we would love to explore more tools. We consider ourselves tool enthusiasts. No, okay. Uh, but we would. We would absolutely love to explore more tools. Um, I think that we've received a ton of inspiration from the community. Aside from projects that we already had planned, uh, you guys have made it pretty clear that there are some things you're looking for, and a slimmer screwdriver is absolutely one of them. I don't know that we would be able to do it in this multi-bit style. I don't know that we'd be able to have bit storage in the handle like this, but you guys are right. There are absolutely situations where it can be favorable to have a thinner screwdriver just for, for access, and that is something that we want to be able to address in the, in the mid to long term. As you guys know from the <clears throat> development timeline of the first screwdriver, it's not the kind of thing that's going to happen overnight or even in a month. Uh, this is more like, uh, you know, 12 to 24 month kind of time frame thing. So if you absolutely need a tool today, I'm not going to tell you to wait for ours. But if you're not desperate, I think I can say fairly safely that we will have something for you. I actually need to pop this fan back off for a second here. Go ahead and install the rest of our memory. Okay, yeah, got another one here from Michael. Can you uh, repeat for new viewers how you are uh, deciding who gets to buy this RN Jesus machine? Ah, uh, yes. You haven't even said yet. Who gets to buy the machine for a dollar? If you're just tuning in, we are going to be making it available on, actually, ooh, have we figured that out? Not really, no. You know what? We're going to have to get you guys an update. Uh, maybe we'll post that on the official Twitter handle. So that's at Linus Tech. So can you, uh, can you coordinate that with Artie and, uh, and the social guys, Alex? Yeah, we'll figure out eventually. Yes. We will figure out a way to do it. OK. Man, we're all rigged up here. 64 gigs of RAM, 10 core CPU, NHD 14, 500 gig SSD. And then this is just, uh, we used this little M.2 to U.2 adapter. So we've got a drive that we can boot off of for the sake of getting this video done in a reasonable amount of time so you guys aren't just tuned into a live stream of installing Windows for the longest time. All right. I'm feeling, I'm feeling OK. Things haven't gone as well as they could have for me. I'm still selling a probably close to $2,000 computer for a dollar. But it could have been a lot worse. What are we rolling for next here? I'm well, your kind current of... total is $1,690. $1,690. Oh my goodness. Do we do the GPU now or power supply? power supply? Power supply. Let's roll for power supply. Dang, I keep leaving my dice all over the place. All right, I'm coming over this way. Let's walk through our options here. Six choices. Well, I shouldn't call them choices. Six chances. If I roll a one, the system, I don't even know if this will power it, gets an Antec Neo Echo 450 watt non-modular power supply that I believe was scored during Scrapyard Wars. In 2011, I said it was a phenomenal value. In 2022, <laughs> Adam, who wrote these up for us, says it's basically a bomb. Oh, yeah. I wrote you wrote that, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't hook a, uh, I wouldn't hook an RTX 4090 up to that thing. That's for sure. That was from the uh, most optimized PC for price. The most optimized for price PC. Oh, the ruthless economy. Yes, PC. the ruthless economy PC. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. If I roll a two, oh wow, this is pretty nice. You get a 750 watt, 80 plus titanium Seasonic Snow Silent. Uh, hope. <laughs> Oh, OK. This, this is one of the older ones that doesn't have their fixed overcurrent protection. Because it says, oh, their, over, their overcurrent protection is really good and still just works well. 
Oh, right. OK, so Seasonic had an issue where their overcurrent protection would kick in like, extremely quickly. So uh, like micro spikes, like transient, from, uh, like transient load spikes, would cause their overcurrent protection to kick in. I believe they've tuned it since then. Uh, to account for 30 series and 40 series cards and make sure, making sure that like, just because of a very, very instantaneous spike, your system doesn't turn off. Um, but this one is an older one. So if you get a 4090 or something, your system will just turn off while you're gaming. Uh, if I roll a 3, you get an EVGA Supernova 850G+. Plus. It's 850 watts. and. What can we say about it? Well, you got to buy EVGA power supplies now that you can't get their GPUs. Hey, all right, cool. Approximate value, $169. Oh, at four, we start getting into the really pricey stuff. This is a Corsair HX1000. It's a 1,000 watt, 80 plus platinum power supply, valued at about $250. And then next up, oh, we have a Silverstone Strider 1200 watt 80 plus platinum power supply valued at $250. Uh, Silverstone claims it is the world's smallest kilowatt level ATX power supply. Not that that matters in our case. Ah, and just, you know, because we can. <laughs> if I roll a six, you get a Seasonic Prime TX 1600 watt. Absolutely incredible power supply, but hope it fits in your case. We should be fine. Just to spice things up, or make them interesting, stay there, uh, sorry. Just to spice things up, I am going to take an advantage on this one. Not, not because, no, 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 not, not because I don't want to put a good power supply in the system. Oh, God, I felt my gag reflex actually come up a little bit. I do not like cheese whiz, <laughs> sir. I did as a kid. I would eat it on celery with, uh, like, um, raisins, like bugs on a log or whatever. Uh, in adulthood, I have touched it one time, and I very um, was unhappy. Let's just put it that way. Oh, even the smell. I don't understand why you want the advantage here. Like I want the advantage here. Right, I was going to explain that. Because I want to make sure that we end up with a compatible power supply. OK? I don't want to. I don't want to necessarily give away this, and I don't want to end up with this. So I want to make sure we get something in between. Oh, even just the consistency of the stuff is disgusting. How big of a spoonful is it supposed to be? That looks good. I want my other die to help me feel better. Oh my god, the smell. <sighs> mm-hmm. Um, okay. Here's my two dice. Um, oh, I really don't want to do this actually. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I've committed now. <laughs> Sorry. To be clear, this was your idea. I don't want to throw up on stream. But I'm close. It's all my cheeks. I don't know if I can swallow it. <laughs> okay, that goes about a third of it. Okay. Oh my god, that is so disgusting. I'm sorry, no offense if you eat this stuff. I don't mean to hurt your feelings. Oh, okay, I've only got about a quarter of it left. Oh. Oh. Wow. I am not cleaning the spoon. The spoon is plenty clean. It was fine. Look, there was like nothing left. That's it. I dipped it back in. Okay. I seriously almost threw up at the beginning there. <laughs> that was extremely. <clears throat> Sorry, I need water. That was, my mouth was like bone dry. Okay, lttstore.com. 
excuse me. Okay. Whew. All right. Time to roll. Let's do it. Three and five. Okay. I get to choose between the EVGA 850G Plus and the Silverstone Strider 1200 watt. This is going to come down to ease of installation. Is this thing modular? All right. I'm going to take the 80, 850G Plus. Huh. Uh, okay. Let's get that installed. Actually, we can throw the motherboard in the case as well. Dan, do you want to hit me up with some more merch messages? Sure. What are you wearing? What, what, what am I wearing? What are you wearing? I am wearing the uh, case t-shirt from lttstore.com. Uh, no, it is not a Renault logo. That is actually a coincidence. Um, I pretty much guarantee you the designer who worked on this shirt doesn't know or care about Renault. Um, I definitely do see the resemblance now that people have pointed it out to me, but it was not something that I noticed either during the design review phase because Renault is not a, a common brand here in North America. So you Europeans out there that are like, oh, obviously they copied Renault. We actually didn't. It's, it's a computer case. If anything, we copied the Antec P180. Um, it's, just, it's just a box. And it's like, you know, transparent and geometric and stuff or whatever. Uh, Oh, I'm still getting little waves of like mm, uh, from time to time. That's extremely unpleasant. Oh, I have to roll for cable management. Hey, where's my coin at? Uh, we don't have a coin. We don't have a coin? Uh, just, okay, uh, cheese whiz lid. Uh, oh, no, here, 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 here. I can make one. But this one's bigger. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's weighted one way. This is fair. Okay, I'm good. Here, 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 here. I'm going to rub some thermal compound into one side of this. Uh, Just roll a d20. There we go. Uh, I could roll a d20, but now I have made my coin. So uh, here, I'm just going to yeah, wipe off the excess there. OK, there. See, look, we've got silver side and brown side. OK, silver side for cable management, brown side for rat's nest. You guys ready? Oh my god. Um, Come on, come on. Oh, just. Oh, rat's nest it is. Well, okay then. <laughs> I was gonna do a decent job of it. Uh, tell me something. Does that mean I am to actively make it worse, or do I just not bother? I think that means just don't bother. Not don't actively bother. Make okay. It bad. I'm not gonna undo any cable management that is already done then. Man, Twitch is blowing up saying it's rigged. It's not rigged. What are you guys talking about? Well, the paste is going to stick to the table. We are doing this live, guys. Look, look. You guys want me to prove that my coin isn't, isn't rigged here? All right. Let's flip it again. OK. Brown side. Yeah? See? Silver. Silver. There you go. 50-50 coin. Proven. Sample size of four. That's statistically significant, right? Make it worse. Oh, Twitch apparently thinks everything is rigged. They think there's a magnet on the table. A magnet on the table? It's made of cardboard, you guys. I wish I had my swear button. It's made of cardboard. The magnet would do nothing. Uh, OK, well. 24 pin. Where's my, where's my 8 pin EPS connector? Oh, my goodness. Sam wants to know when you're going to get the fire pole installed. I would have loved to do a fire pole in lab two. Believe it or not, there is actually a perfect place for it. If you guys watch the tour, you can see there's an area where there's a little balcony that totally looks out over the warehouse and totally could have a fire pole. Unfortunately, for liability reasons, there is no way that that would make it past our legal counsel. We just cannot have people fire poling around at work. And um, hopefully my colleagues won't take this personally, but 
some of the people who work here. Kind of nerdy, not that coordinated. I think the chance of injury is higher in this workplace than at a fire station. <laughs> It's probably the most charitable way that I can word that. Oh. Uh, Alex is explaining uh, he apparently found out why fire poles existed in the first place. Yeah, so fire poles exist because they had to have very windy staircases in the fire stations back in like the 1800s because the horses would just wander up the stairs if they were wide and large and then not be able to get back down and i guess that then you horses have to kill up them, a set of stairs is a bad time yeah and then they were like oh it's so long to get down these windy little turny stairs so they made fire poles interesting and then we just kept them not yeah. necessarily because they're actually faster, but because they're like a tradition now, or what? Yeah, pretty much just a tradition and they're fun. Oh, well that's kind of sick, actually. All right. I mean, leave it to firefighters to just be like pretty cool, you know? We don't have any screws, Alex. There's no hardware in this case. Uh, all right. Do, we, do, I have to, do I have to roll to get screws, or am I allowed to just have screws? Can I have screws? Just have screws. I can have we screws. We have a bunch of screws. OK, thank goodness. M3 screws. Uh, where are my 632 screws? I don't see them here. Uh, there should be a whole thing of 632 screws. And I, uh, <clears throat> right oh, there. oh. Yep. all right, good. 632 screws. Ah. Ah. Can you? You need some assistance. What is this caught on? Oh. Oh, this is hilarious. Look what happened. Here, check this out. Andy, have a look at this. There's just a hole, presumably so like water doesn't get stuck in it or something like that, here. And one of these long screws had randomly gotten in the hole, so it was getting caught on the way out. <laughs> That's great. OK. Cool. I've got my M3s. I've got my M3. That's the one I want, right? Yeah, yeah. My M3s, my 632s. And what the hey? Here's some thumb screws, just in case we need them. Awesome. Let's go ahead and get our motherboard installed. Got any other chats for me? Trying here. One second. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, hey, Linus, any interest in doing a future video on the Flipper Zero? The what zero? You haven't heard of the Flipper Zero? It's oh, the Flipper Zero, flipper yes. Flipper Zero, yeah. Yes, we are quite interested in doing a video on the Flipper Zero. In fact, I think we've actually got one in. Uh, we were trying to come up with a cool angle for it, but honestly, the product is so interesting that we might not really need to. We might just need to spend some time with it. Um, figure out its ins and outs. It's extremely capable, so that is definitely going to take some time for us if we want to do it properly. But yes, yeah, super cool product, and we're very interested in it. Um, did you know that there's an LTD store in the Hellpoint video game? Hellpoint? I've not even heard of this I either. I have not heard of Hellpoint. Anyone else here? But can we? Uh, can we can we bring it up? Can we find can we find out a little bit about Hellpoint and the LTT store in it? Chase, you want to have a look for that? Yeah. No. Hellpoint. Okay. Let's see. Um, this is the first. No, this is the first time hearing of the LTT store in Hellpoint. Yeah. Oh, uh, are you gonna clean the case, or because maybe you rolled uh, dirty or in rat's nest, oh. you're just gonna leave it dirty? Yeah, I think since we rolled rat's nest, we're just gonna leave the case dirty. Sorry, guys. OK, this one's a little bit more involved while we uh, learn about Hellpoint. Um, this is from Stuart. I would love to hear your thoughts on the MSI liquid coolers that have had the liquid start clumping in the fins and blocking flow. They seem to be slow to roll out an advanced RMA worldwide. You heard about this? Uh, I have very briefly heard about this. I mean, that's one of the risks that you take with any kind of AIO liquid cooling solution. 
Uh, if I had to guess, I haven't looked into it extensively or anything like that, but if I had to guess, I would say what's probably happening is there's either some kind of a reaction taking place in the loop, um, or um, there's some kind of microbial growth that is happening in the loop, and MSI's antimicrobial additive might not be working correctly. Either way, I, it's a bad situation, and MSI absolutely needs to get their act together. I saw Hardware Unboxed replied to someone about it, saying that MSI Australia seems to be doing fine. And as far as uh, Steve from Hardware Unboxed is concerned, uh, it's kind of like not his problem at that point. That, well, they, he didn't say it like that, but he's basically like, I mean, I don't know. Um, Everyone that I'm in touch with and everyone, all of my contacts, there's nothing they're going to be able to do about it because MSI Australia seems to be doing fine. But beyond that, I don't really know much else. Uh, this is one of the reasons, though, that I always recommend to people when they build a water-cooled system to just put water in it. It's called water cooling for a reason because the best thing to put in the loop is water. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hook these fans up to the, here we go. Right, I'm not supposed to spend time doing cable management. I just, sorry, it's a reflex. I just automatically start doing it. So okay, I'm just going to drag this fan over here and plug it in. That's it? Oh, it disgusts me. Uh, okay, sure. This, actually makes me uncomfortable. Do you want some like, uh, there's already some zip ties in the case. Do you want a pair of clippers to like remove no, those? No, we're not going to undo cable management all that's right, already right. there. I'm just not going to bother taking the most optimal path for the cables that I run. Well, uh, I mean, okay, I, I did it again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, I can't not cable manage things. I'm just, I'm not going to do a good job, okay? I promise not to do a good job. Oh, uh, and yeah, and you said water. You're supposed to use distilled water, right? Distilled water. So distilled water is one of those things that uh, is certainly better, but it actually doesn't. OK. You should use distilled water. I don't bother. And the reason for that is twofold. Number one, most of the computers that I build are going to be torn down in a matter of weeks, if not days. And the problems that can be caused by tap water are not the kind that will manifest in a couple of days. There's, there's no performance problem with tap water, at least not one that you would be able to measure. Reason number two that I don't bother with distilled water is that I live in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And our tap water is among the best in the world. So we don't have a ton of like hard minerals in our water. We don't have a ton of uh, uh, what is it, like fluorine or whatever? Like we don't have a ton of crap in the water that could potentially cause issues with seals or cause gunk to build up inside the loop. And those are the, those are the two reasons that I don't bother. But you probably should use distilled water. It costs next to nothing. Uh, I just don't feel like taking a trip to the grocery store every time I need to put water in something. And like I said, most of the time, I'm either going to tear down the system in no time or I am going to, or I'm like measuring performance. And then I'm going to drain it immediately. So it just doesn't matter. Uh, for my own machine, what I do do, because even good quality drinking water can um, suffer from microbial growth. So what I do do in my own loop is, <laughs> I do do, sorry. Uh, <laughs> what I do do in my own system is I'll put in a couple drops of iodine. And that is sufficient to keep everything dead for many, many years from my personal experience. And it's not going to do anything harmful to any of the other components in your system. Hit me. Hmm. Oh, man. I can barely read this. I think that's it for now. That's it for now? I might have All some right. more in a minute. Sorry, I just got to plug in. I'm just hiding in the computer. Where's my, what are my three switches here? OK, we got reset. We got power LED. OK, I see. Which uh, seems to think that this is cable management, and it's also rigged. What? What rigged? Nothing is rigged, you guys. This isn't cable management. This is just plugging in cables. 
If this qualifies as cable management to you, let me tell you. Uh, well, OK. Actually, it does look kind of OK from this side. Look, look at this, though. OK, I didn't cable manage that. See? I mean, yeah, I ran these through the nearest holes, but that's not cable management. That's just plugging in a cable to the right, you know, through the right hole. That's, that's not managed. OK, so oh, I, had to fight the, I had to fight the urge to put this here, right, so that it takes a better path. It's just something that I just do, like, automatically. I don't think about it anymore. There we go. All right, and what else do we need? Ah, yes, I need my dual 8-pin powers. Michael wants to know uh, when LTT is doing gamer fuel drinks and snacks. No food? Uh, gamer fuel drinks and snacks. So there's a couple of issues with that. First of all, I have an, I, I'm allergic to liability. And anything that is for human consumption carries some pretty serious business liability. The last thing that I want is to have a situation where, like, we release a food product. I mean, OK, look. like. Obviously, we do our due diligence. We do our best to make good products. Um, and I think that comes through in the results. But mistakes happen, right? And the last thing I want is like some you know, uncooked egg in an energy bar or something. Like it doesn't get properly treated or you know, whatever, right? The last thing I want is someone dying or something after eating our product or getting really sick. And you know, even aside from the cost, you know, even if we sold so many, we could afford to pay out whatever medical fees or lawsuit or, or, or whatever, right? It's just, it's not something that I've ever been particularly comfortable with. Um, as for energy drinks, I don't drink them. Um, you know, whenever we've done spots for them in the past, uh, we've always just kept it like factual. This is what it is. Like I won't, I won't endorse an energy drink. I'm personally not a huge fan of them. I don't think we're actively working with any energy drink sponsors. Um, I, know, I know we've like collaborated with Red Bull at the LAN event and stuff like that, but that was basically just like them showing up in their car. Like I'm not going to be like, drink this, drink this thing. It you know, makes you sprout an extra arm out of your ass or whatever. Like I'm not. They just apparently they also just like gave us a bunch of uh, energy slop. So I'm I'm not I won't I won't drink them. So if I won't drink them, I don't think it's the kind of thing that um, I'd like to make. Uh, one thing I was approached about a while back is an old colleague of mine has gotten into like CBD gummies and stuff. And to be clear, I'm well aware of the the negative connotation of anything to do with like CBD products. Um, but he, he had talked to me about this like uh, gummy, like a sleep aid gummy. And he was like, look, I know, you know, you have, you're, you know, you're worried about the, the branding and whatever else and your, you know, liability and blah, 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 but just try it. And I did try it and it like was pretty good. So that's something that I thought about. And I know he was also talking about doing like a, like a, like a gaming one as well, like a focus one, but I'm. Fairly, I'm fairly drug averse in general. Like I don't like to take anything if I don't have to. Um, so it wasn't something that we decided to move forward with, even aside from just like the the fact that the whole CBD space is like kind of skeezy. Like it can be a good product, but there's just a lot of skeeziness in that industry, from my experience. Everybody wants LTT weed now. Uh, everyone wants LTT weed. So again, that's another thing. So part of the issue with the, uh, the energy drink was that if, I'm, if I not only don't consume it, but won't consume it, like I will not drink an energy drink. I never have, I never will. Um, so I wouldn't even be able to like, you know, make sure I think it tastes good. You know, like make sure the quality is good or whatever. I also don't smoke weed, so um, I, I wouldn't be able to confidently say to you guys, yeah, this is the like, best quality weed or whatever, because 
be like, no, oh, it looks all right. Like, like I, don't, I, do, I just don't know. It's not something that I understand well. With a oh. screwdriver, how are we able to make arguably the best screwdriver? Because I'm super picky about it. I use screwdrivers all the time. I know what I like about it. But if I can't really give meaningful feedback during the product development process, how on earth are we supposed to develop a good product? Yeah, no meaning. Yeah. I don't mean to roast you too bad, but uh, your palette in general is not such that I think you could wholeheartedly endorse any food product. Look, look. What? Just because I don't like cheese whiz, you're saying that my palate is not food endorsement ready? No, I reject. I reject that premise. I would say that objectively, cheese whiz is garbage. And the fact that my palate detects that it is garbage means it is a reliable palate. Reliable, reliable palate. That is garbage. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. All right. How are we doing here, guys? OK, it's kind of cable managed. But the back, the back, the back is bad. The back is bad, I promise. See? Look, awful. What are we rolling next? What are we rolling next? Yeah, oh, look, Twitch decide. chat's calling it liquefied dolphin jizz. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That is what it smells like. Okay. Uh, I, think, I think it's time for GPU, isn't it? Sure. OK, what all do we have left? GPU and peripherals, right? Yep. Man, this ended up being a relatively simple build. Nice build, but a simple build. Now, I couldn't help noticing, Alex, that we have a whopping 20 options for yeah. GPUs. D20. Is there a D20 in yeah, there? Yeah, D20. OK, you guys hang here. I'll be right back with the D20. All right, let's do it. Uh, oh, this boy. OK. Uh, oh, wow, we got to get through all of our choices here. All right, if I roll a 1, oh, we get the NVIDIA. 8800 GTS. Approximate value is $40. And the release year on this bad boy, 2007. Uh, we appear to have a typo here. This is apparently an incredible power supply. Hope it fits in your case. Oh, yeah, uh, that was the placeholder. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> do you want the actual description? No, it's OK. <laughs> Next up, ooh, OK. This, I'm going to tease an upcoming video. This is the EVGA Classified GTX 590. We've got a super cool video coming on the history of EVGA's innovation, or history of EVGA. The history of innovation from EVGA, with a particular focus on their GPU innovation. Now that they are bowing out of the market, uh, we felt like it was a good time to look back at some of the really cool products that EVGA has released over the years. This is one of them. This not only has two GPU dies on it, OK? But if I recall correctly, this is actually an overclocked version of the GTX 590. It has a power draw of 375 watts, putting it on par with even modern top tier cards for its power consumption. But that was back in 2011. We've also got the GTX 780 Classified. I believe this was the first classified GPU from EVGA. Don't quote me on that. But it's not getting driver updates, but it doesn't stop it having better drivers than Intel GPUs. Oh, sick burn. Alex, did you write that? Yeah. Ooh, spicy. That's if we roll a three. If we roll a four, oh, with an approximate retail value of $140, you get the Gunnier Intel Arc A380. It has AV1 and a frame time graph that could be mistaken for FirmArc. Oh, 6 gigs GDDR6, release year 2022. But in some games, it'll actually perform worse than this from 2013. <laughs> Next up, this is an awkward thing. If anyone from EVGA is watching, um, yeah, we know. Um, some of these, they need to like go back to EVGA. They're part of their own museum. So so if we roll them, either I'll have to eat hot sauce and re-roll it, or we will find a suitable replacement one and we'll send that back to you guys, I guess? Uh, yeah, we'll just have to go on eBay and like buy yeah. a 980 or whatever. Uh, Maxwell was a great generation, but NVIDIA wasn't quite ready to leave AMD in the dust just yet. Approximate value of the GTX 980 is $115. Next, we've got a Sapphire RX 590. Basically, it's the RX 580 on steroids. It's worth about 120 bucks. Oh my goodness. Alex, 
there's a 1 in 10 chance that people are going to end up with an Intel GPU. This is the A770 with an approximate retail value of 350 bucks. It's great when it works. Unfortunately, a lot of the time, <coughs> it doesn't. With an approximate value of $75, we've got the GTX 1060. This was the most popular GPU for years and years. It still works well enough for 1080p low gaming. Oh, now we're getting into some really interesting stuff in the latter half. Number nine is an AMD Radeon Vega 64 liquid cooled card. It has 12 gigs of VRAM, comes with this sick silver industrial design, was released in 2017. Unfortunately, it performs about like a GTX 1080, came two years later, draws more power, and has crap drivers. So. Um, rip that card. If I roll a 10, you get an NVIDIA Titan V, which apparently still has an approximate value of $600. This was released in 2017, has 12 gigs of HBM2 memory, and is an absolute beast for scientists and for gamers with too much money. If I roll an 11, you will get the Radeon Pro SSG. <laughs> okay. In terms of actual GPU compute performance, it's nothing that special, but it has 16 gigs of HBM2 memory and an additional two terabytes of onboard solid state storage that it can use as memory. So for certain simulation and scientific workloads, that thing is a beast. For everything else, it's basically stupid. <laughs> okay. The price. Oh, the price, yeah, $4,820. That is the most expensive GPU here. I think I will have to reroll if we do that. 12 is the RTX 2070 Super, worth about 260 bucks. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, 2070 Ti versus 2070 Super. Yeah, I'm sure the average consumer will be able to easily figure out which one is better based on the name alone. NVIDIA's naming schemes, man have gone from really sensible to utterly confusing. Like Apple too. Typically as a company, you, you think of Apple, you think of like good branding, right? What is Max and Super and Ultra and Pro? What is better out of those four things? <sighs> Next up, we've got the Radeon 7. That's right, this was released in 2019, has an approximate value of $330, and in spite of TSMC's seven nanometer processor and its 16 gigs of HBM2 memory, it still couldn't quite compete with the RTX 2080 in gaming, but hey, it comes with this sweet stand, which we would be happy to send to you if you end up uh, with a 13 roll. Next, we've got an NVIDIA Quadro P5000. Basically, it's a GTX 1080, but with more VRAM and certified drivers. Um, definitely too high on the list, says Alex, but I don't know. I use SolidWorks a lot. Yeah, if you use certain applications that benefit from those certified drivers, you could benefit from that in a big way compared to a gaming card. Oh, now things are getting real interesting. 15 is an NVIDIA Titan RTX. 24 gigs of RAM. The thing is insane for AI and awesome for games if you hate having money. It had a $2,500 MSRP. 16 is the Zotac RTX 3070. It's really tiny and really cute. Look at this. The board only goes up to here. It's a 3070. 8 gigs GDDR6. All right. Oh, boy. Well, how does this thing stand? What the hey? Oh, uh, sure. Yeah, like that. 17 is a Radeon 6750 XT worth 480 bucks. This is a current card released in 2022, about the performance of an RTX 3080, but not exactly in uh, ray traced games. And then, oh wow, we've got an RTX 3080 Ti Ventus 12G, 12 gigs RAM, $1,200. It's uh, not an incredible value, but it's a heckin' fast GPU. And our last two. 19 is a 6950 XT, released in 2022, 16 gigs of GDDR6, and this thing trades blows with the 3090, but at a much better price. Not that you care, since you're buying it for a dollar. And finally, if I roll a 20, I will re-roll. No, okay. 
If I roll a 20 and decide not to eat the spoonful of hot sauce, you will get an RTX 4090 Supreme Liquid X. 24 gigs GDDR6X memory, the fastest GPU on the market, and yes, the spiciest 12-pin uh, power connector. Ah, so much controversy, so little plastic. You know what's funny, Alex? One of the first things I said to the labs team when I went over and saw the first 4090s was, I don't get it. Compared to two 8 pins, which is what we had before, this is much thinner gauge wires and much smaller connectors. Isn't that worse to have 12 thinner gauge wires with smaller contacts versus 16 thicker gauge wires with bigger contacts? And they were like, um, no, there's like a math reason for it. But then in the real world, which is not math, it's just you know the real world where things get messy, um, that's exactly what's happened. Is uh, what, what people believe is happening is these tiny little contacts that have not very much contact area are getting sort of, uh, are making poor contact when people are cable managing. So like bending it down like this or bending it over like this. And it's causing that, that contact to heat up and melt the housing of the connector. So, I'm not going to say I called it, but I called it. I just, I don't, I don't get it. There, there was like a math reason for it. So something to bear in mind is that of those 16 conductors in dual 8 pins, only six of them actually carry 12 volt. Uh, the PCI Express connector has only three powers and then five grounds. Another thing that I never really properly understood I'm not an electrical engineer, or electronics engineer, I guess, would be the ones who would really know about that. Um, so that's always been a little bit confusing for me. Um, but that's one of the, that was one of the arguments for why the new 12 pin is fine, is because it has six 12 volt pins, same as the old arrangement. It's just the, 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 the fragility of, of these, these contacts. It's like, yeah, this seems like it could be a problem. Anyway, probably most people won't encounter those kinds of issues. Uh, here, let's, uh, let's, let's come over here to roll. We'll roll on a Samsung Odyssey Neo G9. Well, we got some more merch messages. You ready? Oh, you want to hit me with a merch message? Actually, no, let's, let, you let's can hit roll me with first. those while I'm installing. Sound good? Good, good. OK, you ready? Yeah. OK. Seven. What the hell is seven? I don't remember anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, you got the Intel Arc A770. I mean, at least it's the cool limited edition 16 gigs of VRAM one. Man, we ended up building the all Intel PC here or something like that. That's hilarious. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy installed. And when I say bad boy, I don't mean with the normal connotation. <laughs> I mean, this boy is bad. OK, in all seriousness, what I said in the video was true. I want people to buy these. You got to have, I want to have faith. You don't got to have faith. I want to have faith that Intel is going to make this thing better, um, not just by releasing new fixed hardware with Battle Mage and Celestial, but also by updating the drivers on Alchemist and making it more compatible and, and, and perform better and all of that good stuff. It's just that <clears throat> right out of the box, this is not going to be the greatest performing gaming PC. Does that motherboard even have rebar? Oh, snap. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. This platform, to my knowledge, does not have any support for resizable bar, which is a feature that allows the uh, GPU and CPU to talk to each other more efficiently, essentially. Um, wow. OK, uh, let's find out. X299 prime uh, resizable bar. I, I, don't, I don't think. I don't think this is going to work. Yeah. Well, it'll work. It'll work, but the performance 
might suck. Oh, hold on. Resizable bar support on X299 motherboards. It seems to be motherboard by motherboard. It's motherboard by motherboard. Interesting. Okay. If I had to guess, and this is kind of this is kind of unfair and it's kind of stupid. If I had to guess, because this is a super premium motherboard, I suspect it is actually less likely that it got a later BIOS update with resizable bar. Because for legacy products that are no longer being actively sold, it's fairly typical for manufacturers to focus their efforts on the ones that sold the most. Because at that point, it's not about a money-making calculation. It's about a um, customer service calculation and how, few, how many complaints they essentially want to deal with or, or oh, how many what? complaints they get. We got it. It has it? Yep, version 1004 that dropped in 2021. Support for recyclable bar function. Okay. We got hey, it. Hey, we dodged a bullet. Yep. It would have worked without it, but the performance of the ARC A770 without rebar is atrocious. So it is extremely lucky that we are able to update the BIOS on this system and get resizable bar support. Oh, very nice. Very nice. That's awesome, guys. Awesome. <laughs> All right, Dan, what else you got for me? OK, Noctua fans, regular or Redux? Uh, Noctua fans, regular or Redux? If you want the absolute most performance, you have to go with the regular ones. Noctua always sandbags the Redux ones a little bit. But if you want the reliability of a Noctua product and realistically most of the performance, I think Redux is a great value. I, I really like the, because uh, the NFF series, or a, no, I believe it's the NFA series that's like their best now. Like, great fan. But you can get, in the Redux, you can get the old P series, pressure optimized one. And if you actually look closely at the spec sheets for them, like at most, it might cost you a degree or two. So yeah, if you're building something that's balls to the wall, sure, you know, by all means, go balls to the wall. Get the full blown fans. You can get them in black, which is kind of cool and all that stuff. But if you're, if you're just on a budget and you just want something extremely quiet, extremely reliable, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing not quality about the Redux fans. You just don't get some of the bells and whistles, like the uh, silicone corners and, and stuff like that. You'd still get a really high quality bearing, high quality motor, totally good stuff. OK, what's the total cost of the computer now, Alex, to me? Uh, oh, wait, um, one second. Have you been keeping up? I have, but I didn't do the GPU yet. Oh. Uh, the How much is that thing? Let's the throw GPU another merchandise. The GPU is 349. 349. Okay. All right. That's kind of an okay looking build. Here, can I toss some of this stuff off to the side, guys? I'm just going to toss this over here, and Chase or Alex will will get rid of this stuff, get it off the table, because it is time for us to roll peripherals. Yes, that's right. Things are about to get really spicy. I Let's do the keyboard and mouse messages. first, and then we're going to make our way over to monitor land, where I have my biggest potential remaining hit. Only one of those monitors is, oh my god, only two of them are under $1,000. Oh no, that one's under 1000 as well, but it's 850 There's basically a 50-50 chance that I'm spending over a grand on the monitor for this mess. For those of you who are tuning in late, the name of the game is I am building the random PC. Every component selected by die roll, but with the catch that I have to sell it at the end for one dollar. Alex, what's the total damage so far? $2,208. $2,208. Great. I'm not going to go through in extreme detail all of our different mouse options, but you can see here we have a lot of different options for mice. At least you would be able to. Yeah, there you go. Um, Andrew, if you want to frame for the mice. Yeah, there we go. There's a couple nope, that nope. you should just Cut talk about. Cut to Andrew about. Cam. There we go. All right, there's a couple notable ones. Uh, we've got the G403 Lightspeed. 
Still there's, worth about a hundred bucks, even though it came out in 2016. There's the boom slang. We've got the boom slang in here? Yeah. Oh, shut up. Wow. Um, the Razor boom slang, released year 1999. Okay, sick. It's sad that Razor's no longer cool. Ouch, ouch, Alex. There's also the Zao Koenig M1K. Uh, oh, okay. Zao Koenig M1K, this is a $300 mouse? Wait, what? I haven't even seen this. It's made of carbon fiber and apparently doesn't even have a scroll wheel because, and I quote, it would be too heavy. Wait. What the hell? Are you even serious? This is 3D, the base is 3D printed. The base is 3D printed. This is a $300 mouse. Um. The lighting, lightest gaming mouse. Did we, did we do like a short circuit on this or something? What? Yeah, David did. Okay. That is $300. Well, you can have it if I roll that. I'm it's not, real carbon fiber. Yeah, I don't care if it's real carbon fiber. The ergonomics, it's terrible. 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 No would, offense. Would you rather use that or the Surface Mouse? I would, I would, oh, oh, the Surface Arc. Uh, no, I would rather use this than the Surface Mouse. Uh, it is amazing to me that a company the size of Microsoft, and for that matter, a company the size of Apple, it is amazing to me that, well, companies with those kinds of sizes can release products that have ergonomics as bad as the Magic Mouse and this stupid thing. And it's sticky. Is it dirty or is that just soft touch finish going bad? It's probably just like the rubber eating Ew. itself. I hope that I roll this. Just get rid of this thing. What's this thing even worth? How is this still worth $52? If you pay $52 for a Surface Arc Touch Mouse, I don't know how to help you. Game Ball is also you know what in I mean? there. Game Ball. Oh, that, uh, 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 wait, I don't, even, I don't see it, Alex. Where, oh, the Game Ball, here it is. The Game Ball. Uh, yeah, it's a trackball mouse for gaming. You don't want it unless you are like that one person who uses a trackball for gaming. Okay, we ready? How many options are there? 12? Where's my 12-sided die? This guy right here? Three. Oh, shut up. We got the Game Ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the Game Ball! I haven't even shown this to you guys. Wait, I have to game on this? Yes. As part of the stream? Oh, no. I don't even want to. Oh. Boo earns. Um. Okay. Uh, here. Sorry. Do you mind? Thanks. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> so, you have three clicks on this side, another three clicks on this side. It's ambidextrous. And this is how you move. Um, I am very unlikely to be able to do this. That'll, that'll be very, very interesting. OK, let's go ahead and throw this over here. No camera guys, don't, don't follow me over here. It's OK. I'm going to roll for the keyboard now. We've got some pretty good options in here for keyboard. We've got the Cloud9 ergonomic gaming keyboard. Uh, we've got the Ashasapo C1000, approximate value, $200. A million buttons, but no arrow keys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Matthias Laptop Pro. The Laptop Pro. Why is this called a Laptop Pro? Uh, I don't know. It's Apple stuff. What the heck? It ha is, that, is that a micro B port with like a schmoo thing in it or something? And then it has a built-in hub? Wait, is this, when, was, when did this come out? Like this year, I think. This, this is a new product? Yeah. Shut up. This feels like crap. It's it, a product aimed at Apple people. Ew. I'm not going to do that. This is literal garbage. Well, oh, do you know what also is? Uh, what else is garbage? Uh, just take a look at this guy right here. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> you better hope you don't get this. We have no idea what it's worth, but it is the membranist membrane keyboard. That's right, there's no keycap, just membrane. 
Uh, if you ever want your keyboard to feel like popping zits on someone's back, <laughs> we got you, fam. Uh, that's if we roll a one. What else we got in here that's interesting? We do have a couple pretty high-end options. We've got the K70 RGB Pro Mini from Corsair, 60% keyboard with Cherry Mech Silver Speed. Uh, uh, speed Silver Switches for gaming. It's a keyboard for gamers. Uh, drop Control 10 Keyless, who needs a number pad? What am I, an accountant? This has Halo Clear Switches. Ooh. Let's go ahead and roll it. 12 options here as well, is that right? I don't see 12. Uh, 10? I see a lot. Well, this one's numbered 11. Oh. So uh, maybe we, one, two, three, four, five, seven, six, nine, ten. No, OK. I guess, uh, what, if I roll a 12, I get to pick? Sure. OK, let's do that. Uh, I'm going to roll right here, Andy. Uh, Matthias, I stole this from the wrong place. All right, ready? And eight. Let's say, oh, no! No! <laughs> We've got the Laptop Pro. How is this valued at $170? <laughs> Look at this flex. It's apparently the world's quietest wireless mechanical keyboard. <laughs> As a bonus, we should uh, read out a merch message. But also, like, is that a lie? Well, there aren't that many wireless mechanical keyboards. Is it mechanical? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it's mechanical. What? I don't, I, I suspect they haven't done anything particularly special to make it quiet. Like, what are, tell me. It feels amazing and it's really quiet. <laughs> uh, too noisy, but mechanical keyboards are, are noisy. Well, no, not necessarily, Matthias. Built from our new quiet click mechanical switches. It's fast and comfortable without the extra noise. Can, can, can this keycap come off? <clears throat> Did they build a mechanical keyboard that doesn't have removable key, keycaps? Or am I just an idiot? Here, we've got keycap pullers here. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh my god doesn't use cherry compatible stems. Oh, balls. Also, there are no markings on this switch whatsoever. This may actually be their own proprietary switch. Well, it sounds like hot garbage. <laughs> and it's yours for the low price of a dollar. All right, you guys can go back around to the front. I'm gonna head over there. It's time to roll the monitor. Because until we do, we're not gonna know how much this bad boy costs. Let me go ahead and get our boot drive plugged in. I'm just gonna hang that out the back here. Uh, yeah, do you wanna hit me with some merch messages? All right. Uh, this is from Kevin. Get this arranged. Hey, Linus, been watching since NCIX. Uh, almost chose the world of tech for a career, but I found uh, the world of explosive engineering. My GPU swatch cases with my newest upgrade, and it's uh, locking up the desktop. Uh, do, you think, uh, do you think it's a riser? Oh, sorry. I, I spaced out for a second there while I was uh, trying to figure out how on earth I'm going to game on this combo. Can you read me the middle of that? Again, there's something wrong with the, uh, something wrong with this person's computer. He uh, he GPU swapped the cases and uh, with his newest upgrade, and it's locking up the desktop. Uh, you ever think that's a riser cable? You ever had that problem before? Yeah, that could be could be. If you have a riser, I would reseed everything. I mean, it's it's classic, right? Did you try turning it off and turning it back on? Did you try unplugging it and plugging it back in? Sometimes the simplest troubleshooting steps are the best ones. What else you got? Uh, let's see here. Uh, are there plans for LTT to have an interface where customers can build a computer to see what's compatible and what's not? Maybe a labs thing, I guess. Um, I'd love for us to be able to do something like that. In the meantime, I think PC Part Picker serves that pretty well. Uh, if we did do something like that, we'd want to make sure that we are adding value rather than just cloning something that someone else does. Um, and I think there's a lot of questions for us to answer around how exactly we would do that before I would commit to it. 
I got another one here from Anonymous. Uh, really enjoyed the video where you modified a Game Gear and a Game Boy Advance. Are there any plans to do uh, future videos with modifying retro hardware? Yeah, yeah, those videos performed reasonably well for us to the point where I would say yes, we can, we can go ahead and commit to more game console modding. I don't know that we'll do a ton of it, but we will do more. Once again, I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I, I, where's number eight? First up, we have uh, the Scepter E205W. The approximate value is 80 bucks on Amazon. Uh, the resolution is 900p, and the refresh rate is up to 75 hertz. Our commentary here is it uh, displays an image. <laughs> if you roll a one, uh, or if I roll a one, you're going to be pretty unhappy. Second, we, oh no. Oh, this thing. Okay. The ASUS ProArt PQ22U. It was released in 2019 which was, if you recall, very early for an OLED monitor. That's right, full OLED, it's color accurate, and it actually has a folding stand, so you can take it with you on the go. Approximate value, $5,000. There is nothing else on the market quite like it, and I don't believe ASUS makes it anymore. In fact, I don't think they made very many of them. We got a sample, though. And it could be yours if I roll a two. If I roll a three, you will get the Apple Studio display. Approximate value, $1,600, unless you want the textured nano glass, in which case it jumps up to $1,900. It runs at a 5K resolution, uh, refresh rate of 60 hertz. I doubt it'll run at 5K on our PC. It might be limited to 4K. I don't know if that's an older limitation or if that's still the case. But it's not going to be great for gaming, I'll tell you that much, especially on the ARC A770 at that res. Huh. But if 5K is too much for you, I promise you 8K is too much for you as well. If I roll a 4, you will get the Dell UltraSharp UP3218K. It has an approximate value of $4,000, though I doubt anyone would pay that much for it. It runs at an 8K resolution, 60 hertz, and uh, <laughs> Alex wrote, the monitor nobody asked for. Yes, that's about right. It doesn't perform particularly well in any regard. Brightness, input lag, pixel response time, nothing. But it has a lot of pixels. <laughs> if I roll a five, you will get the Omen 27C, worth approximately $450. It's 1440p. 240 hertz, a sensible option for gamers. If I roll a six, oh no. OK, I would re-roll this, I think. You will get our only Alienware AW3423DW Quantum Dot OLED monitor. It's 3440 by 1440p, 175 hertz. It is arguably the best gaming display on the market right now. If I roll a seven. You will get the Aorus FV43U, 43 inches, 4K, 144 hertz. You are going to need a deeper desk. Finally, if I roll an eight, you will get the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9, also arguably the best gaming monitor on the market. It is extra wide, 5120 by 1440p resolution and runs at a whopping 240 hertz with a value of 1800. US dollars. So no matter what I roll, I'm on the hook for at least 80 bucks, but it can be as bad as four or five grand. Well, but do you care if the five grand one goes? I do I care if this one goes? Yeah. I have actually used this on a couple of occasions for travel when I needed a color accurate monitor. Oh. It's very useful. I could replace it with something much more sensible though. So no, I'm not too worried about it. I would actually love it if that 8K one disappears. I've asked logistics to like sell those on Craigslist. Uh, here, here, here. Uh, this is hilarious. Uh, every once in a while, I'll go through and I'll I'll tag things for like get rid of. This is amazing. So I tagged this so long ago that the tape is like peeling off on its own. Stupid 8K Dell. That's what my get rid of this tag said on it. <laughs> All right, that I'll be happy to be rid of. We ready? Eight-sided die. Let's go. Oh, shoot. 
it's an eight. <laughs> I don't know how easily we could get another one of these. Like, if we need this for a project, are these things still out of stock everywhere? Can you check? Uh. Maria bought one yeah. yesterday? OK. Because if these things are in stock, I might be able to stomach it. But if we like, need one of these for something and we can't get it? In stock on Amazon. It's in stock. OK. What's the damage so far? Uh, damage as of right now is $2,528. Mm -hmm. So if we add this to it, that puts me at $3,500 plus $4,300, much of which is tied up in the monitor. Oh, okay, chat, what's the right thing to do? Do we re-roll? Hot sauce time. Oh, wait. Uh, Antoine from Labs just messaged me. We need it. You what, can't. He, need it? he needs it? What do you mean? <laughs> what is, why does he need it? Uh, why does it, why does Antoine from Labs need it? Guys, if you're just tuning in now, I'm allowed a reroll, but I have to eat a spoonful of this. I haven't used a single reroll yet. I'm allowed one, so I'm I'm allowed to reroll, but I either have to eat a spoonful of chocolate plague, okay, hot sauce. Um, chocolate butla pepper mash. Um, okay, these are the ingredients. Chocolate butta pepper mash, which is chocolate butta peppers and vinegar, distilled vinegar and pepper powder, uh, distributed by Pucker Butt Pepper Company. <sighs> Tells me pretty much everything I need to know about that. And Da Bomb Beyond Insanity hot sauce which contains habanero peppers, chipotle puree, water, orange juice concentrate, natural pepper flavoring, tomato paste, potassium sorbate, and sodium benzoate to preserve freshness. This one doesn't sound as bad, but bad. says this sauce is extremely hot. Keep out of reach of children. Consume one drop at a time with extreme caution. Also, Antoine says it's for personal use at his workstation. It's for personal use at his workstation. Yep. See you later, hot sauce. <laughs> no reroll. No reroll. We keep it. We keep it. The one drop warning. Okay, let me just see how bad it is. Okay. Which of these which of these is worse, Andy? Uh, just to warn you, I have both. I have super high I know I know your tolerance. tolerance. Which one is worse? I can't remember. They're both pretty bad. They're both bad. Yeah, I would say if chocolate. Andy says these are bad, it's really bad, they are bad. Chocolate plague is hotter, but it also tastes good. Okay, I've got just a little bit. I want to see if this is going to be potentially tolerable. Oh my god! Even just the smell of it as it came <laughs> close to my nose. It's the after, like after two minutes. Two minutes late. Oh wow! No, oh, it's starting to hit me. Uh, no. No, neither of those are happening right now. Wow. There, there is one thing we need to do, though. One thing we need to do. OK. We need to re-roll the keyboard. We need to re-roll the keyboard. Why? Yeah. Uh, because this only supports Apple devices with Bluetooth. Shut up. Yep. I like brought it out and just assumed you could wire it. This thing does not support a wired connection. Nope. How is that even possible? Who could possibly buy something like this? System requirements, Mac computer with Bluetooth. Actual garbage, manufactured e-waste. No offense, Matthias. I'm sure you've made a good product at some point. That ain't it. OK. All right, we're sticking with the Samsung Odyssey G9. That, oh, this is the <laughs> Neo G9. Antoine says he's prepared to come over and do the hot sauce for you. Antoine will do the hot sauce for me. 
Yeah. I don't know if like workers comp, like I'm allowed to have him consume that much hot sauce. Yeah, we'll comp your butthole. Like is there, no, for serious though, like is there risk of like actual injury? I don't know, I've, I eat this stuff on the daily. You eat this stuff on the daily. I'm sure you don't eat a spoonful of it at once. Well, like I put a couple dabs on my like pasta or whatever. If Antoine wants to eat the hot sauce, yeah, sure, I'll re-roll it. I, I don't think anywhere in the rules it stipulated that I had to be the one to eat it necessarily. Yeah, no. And I'm, I'm willing, I, I was willing. I was willing to eat the $1,800, so. Uh, let's re-roll for keyboard. Come on over here, guys. I need my 12-sided die. Are you guys enjoying the stream, by the way? Are the people liking the stream? Oh, they're not happy about Antoine. They're not happy about <laughs> Antoine. It's cheating. Oh, oh, they don't like it. They're, they're saying it's rigged. It's, it's not rigged. I mean, th this is all happening in real time, guys. This is happening in real time. Okay, let's roll a new one. Four. Uh, okay. You get a Pantsan Quirkle. Approximate value I unknown. A keyboard that says, I want to be different and I want to use Internet Explorer. Also has a command key? Yeah, wait, what? Wait, what? This is, wait, what? It has command and option in the legend, but has an IE button. <laughs> what are you? Why are you here? <laughs> Why am I about to game on you? <laughs> oh no. Oh, terrible. That's great. All right, if, Ant if Antoine wants that to happen, he's gonna have to be here before it's time for me to unbox the monitor. Uh, he has until I get through any remaining merch messages to be over here, otherwise I'm opening up the Odyssey Neo G9. Okay, here we go. What do you got for me, Dan? Let's see. Um... Are there any plans to work on an Apple TV app? Enjoying the content? Would like to see a certified LTT service as an opposed to an AirPlay or Wasserplug? Uh, yeah, we'd love to do an AirPlay app. It's just been a relative, or AirPlay app, but we'd love to do an Apple TV app. It's just been a relatively low priority for us uh, compared to rolling out our new player on the website and the mobile app. It's, it's just a relatively small user base compared to desktop and mobile. It's a, it's a pretty small team. like. You guys can get some idea of how things are going. We have over 30,000 subscribers on Floatplane now, which is absolutely amazing. But what that also tells you is we don't have a team of 100 developers. And as the platform has grown, so has our maintenance uh, load. So we can't just focus on debbing new features. We have to also maintain the ones that we have. And so sometimes new features, like whether it's a Roku app or Apple TV app, um, get deprioritized. Okay, this one's from Sam. Uh, would you ever consider LTT owning a retail space for merch or maybe even a computer store? We actually talked about this today. Uh, we, we do, we are planning to move ahead with LTTstore.com. That is what I, it's a working title, but I kind of want to actually call it that. Uh, but it will be a retail space where you'll be able to buy like LTT merch in person without shipping costs if you live in the lower mainland here, uh, so the Vancouver area and BC. And we also plan to get rid of like stuff that the lab is done with. So the idea is that it'll be like a uh, merch store slash uh, discount, you know, computer stuff store. Because we're going to end up like we just bought what like 300 keyboards recently yeah, yeah you guys saw that. the keyboard tester in the recent video we are going to be churning through keyboards and once we're done with them we're we're done with them so we paid 20 bucks but we'd be happy to get you know in some cases 15 back for it so it could be an opportunity for you to get a good deal on keyboard power supply just like any category of product that we're running through a bunch of testing on that sounds uh, amazing i see antoine over here He's here. I mean, come on, come on over. So you claim uh, this is Antoine from the labs team. Uh, he is our, he's a mechanical engineer. He's our keyboard specialist. Um, you'll have to stand close to me because you're not mic'd, so you'll have to kind of talk into my mic. Uh, he really wants this monitor for his workstation. Now, I, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have approved that in the first place because that's a super high-end monitor for just like 
working yeah. on it. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm going to be a close talker. I'm going to keep moving closer it's to fine. you because you have to be okay. close to my mic. Um, but if you do this, I guess I wouldn't really be able to say no anymore, would I? So you would, you would have it on your workstation, um, which means at least I wouldn't have to sell it for a dollar. See, that's good for you, that's good for me. I've been bugging Jamie since my first week to get that money also. OK. <laughs> um, OK, you, do, have, have you seen the size of the spoon, though? Which one is it? Uh, it's either. either. You can have a look at the ingredients if you'd like. Yeah, I would say Chocolate Plague is hotter, but it also tastes good. Da Bomb is just hot. I really think this is actually a really bad idea. <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm regretting it already. Though. Okay, because I, 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 I can't make you do this. I said it now. Okay. <laughs> That's All right. Only. That's only. Antoine wants the reroll. You know, okay, just to be clear. Don't throw the an eight again. Okay. Okay, you, well, I was going to say, you do understand I could uh, I still I, roll an eight. Yeah. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. It's just. Uh, hold on, hold on. Oh. Because it's for his workstation, chat wants him to do both at the same no, time. No, he doesn't have to do both. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you don't need very much. Okay. That's, that's more than enough. OK, OK. Actually, All right. before that, I should be able to get him. I kind of want to just do a little bit. With me. OK, here you go. OK, that really, really is enough of this stuff. You know that I could still roll an 8 again. I, yeah. I want to have a little bit, that's, too. OK. People said I need to do it because of the keyboard, and also it's just tasty. <laughs> OK, well, here it is, guys. Get the right. difference. Man. Bottoms up. I can't even watch. I really did not want to do that. It takes a second. Oh, it tastes so good. It doesn't taste bad. It's hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. We'll, you... we'll see later when I go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you I'm have a really high heat tolerance? Usually not too much, but that's fine, actually. <laughs> OK. Now I feel like a, no. <laughs> no, now I feel like a wimp, but uh, OK, let's. Reroll, reroll. OK, <laughs> all right, it's coming back over. OK, Antoine has saved the Odyssey Neo G9. You do understand that I only have one reroll, though, right? So there is no saving it a second time. Oh, the look on his face now. Is, is it hitting you harder? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Get, let's get the close up so there's no cheating. Okay. How bad is it? I won't do it twice. You wouldn't do it twice. Okay. Do you want me to? Do you want me to cheese whiz it for an advantage again? You, you can't do that again. I'm not allowed to do that again. No, no, you can't do that again. I thought I was allowed twice. No, just once. Oh, only once. Okay, I was, I was willing to do it for you. Yeah. I would have probably, I, appreciate it. I would have thrown up. Um, very likely, I would have thrown up if I, I still feel nauseous from the first time. Okay, let's do it. It's a two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, um, there goes the $5,000 <laughs> OLED monitor. Somehow we managed to pick something utterly irreplaceable that is worth more than twice as much as the first roll. Um, and I have to forfeit the Odyssey Neo G9 to Antoine for his desk. Well. Uh, Antoine, you might as well take that out of here with you. You can take it, take it back to the lab. <laughs> Is that uh, the just let logistics one? know so you can get it signed out properly. OK, all right. <laughs> OK, I have to do this quick because my laptop's stupid and it's about to die. Oh, it died. Uh, oh, what's up? Our total was $7,528 with that. $7,528, and I will sell it to you for a dollar. We are going to figure out the terms of how that's going to work. We're going to tweet it out. So if you guys want to get a chance to buy it, make sure that you are following the official at Linus Tech Twitter handle. 
Uh, this monitor uses a Type-C power connector. This is going to take me a moment to assemble. This is a super weird monitor. That's a portable one, right? Yeah, it's portable. Comes with a carrying case and all sorts of stuff? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's really big for a portable monitor. 22 inches. There you go. Super thin. Woo. Oh, there you go. Well, something like that. Um, and it, yeah, it has a just butt ton, butt ton of accessories included in the box here. You've got this uh, faux leather carrying case from the Asus collection. You should get a close up of that. Very pretentious. I love it. OK. Uh, Dan, do you mind uh, clicking the more messages below on the float plane chat so that I can uh, read it? Yes. It also comes with this, um, I don't think, this is, what, what, what would this be, like a folio style magnetic cover thing? OK, so that uh, goes, I think, like that, if I recall correctly. Also from the Asus collection. Now, this is where things get really funky. Because if I, oh no, oh, OK. No, here's the, here's the folding stand. Yes. Uh, it's been a while since I've used this thing. Uh, what's in this bag? Nothing. OK, I think, that's, I think that's it. Yeah, it's been a while since I've used it. Because if I recall correctly, I thought there was a way to like, ow, Ooh, ow, it bit my finger. I thought there was a way to fold the cover thing to like make a stand out of it or something. Yeah, I know. I'm. Hmm. How does this work? Yeah, yeah. I think you like. This goes like that, or. No, that's for the vertical. Oh, for vertical. Yeah. For vertical, what though? Uh. <laughs> I don't remember how this is supposed to work. It almost certainly is supposed to sit on this somehow, and it's like, uh, um, yeah, 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 there we go, there we go. OK. Uh, no. Uh, hold on, how does it work? Balls. It, does it go back like that or something? I can't remember. Maybe it's the other way. Guys, help me out. If anyone wants to look it up, careful with my monitor. This is TJ on Twitch chat. Um, is that it? Maybe that's it. Uh, it's got a bit of a balance issue. Uh, hold on. Does it kind of go? Does it go in like that or something? Or like I don't know. Uh, oh, oh. Oh. Well, maybe that's it. That must be it. Um. Yeah, but it doesn't magnetically stick to that spot. Uh. I mean, maybe it, come on, buddy. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> no, I don't want to read the manual. You know what, forget it. I'm pretty sure there's a way to do that, but I don't care. Instead, we're going to do this. OK, this folds out. This folds down. There you go. And it goes on like so. This stand has no functionality, though. All the I.O. for the monitor. Ugh. Uh, uh. <laughs> Sorry, it's actually built into the bottom of it. So we've got our USB-C for power. And then, oh, this is a little inconvenient, Alex. It only has USB-C for input. Oh, great. So yeah, one for power. I'm going to need a display port to USB-C cable. I'm pretty sure we have one somewhere. In the meantime, I will be looking at the uh, display adapters to see if there's anything in here. Oh, man. This is what happens. You build a random computer. Oh, oh you won't find that over here. you got to go over there. Oh, over there. Yeah. You need DP to USB-C. Oh, that may not actually work. Uh-oh. I think you can only go. With those USB to DP cables, I believe they're directional. I don't think you can go from DisplayPort to a USB-C input. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, because it's designed to be a portable monitor. 
Yeah, maybe it'll work. Yeah, but you need a, a USB to DP cable. So it would, it would be over on the other side. I'm just looking to see if there's a, like a DP to USB-C adapter. In the meantime, chat, let me know. Am I, am I wrong? We're not even allowed to re-roll again, so we're going to have to solve this. I don't think any of this is going to work for me here. It's really too bad that that whole USB-C on desktop graphics cards thing didn't take off. NVIDIA did it for one generation, the 2000 series, and then completely abandoned the idea. You know what? While we're waiting for Alex, though, we can go ahead and put some finishing touches on the computer. We are actually missing some of our PCIe slot covers. I haven't screwed in the power supply. And uh, Dan, if you have any more merch messages, you can we've go got, ahead uh, and throw those at me. We've got eight to go before i got to leave in 10 minutes, so this right. is great. Um, hi, Linus. Are you still happy with your Sony A95K? There are some great deals right now, and I'm just deciding between it for 2,000 euros, the LG G2, the Samsung S95B for 1,300 euros. A95K. I am very happy with the A95K. If anything, my family is too happy with the A95K. I have a hard time convincing them to watch movies in the theater room. Um, my, my youngest daughter, my wife, both prefer to watch on the A95K in the family room compared to watching in the theater room downstairs with the much bigger screen, the projector and everything. Um, with that said, I would say that the difference between the A95K and the LG G2 and the Samsung S95B does not justify the increased price. And no matter which of those TVs you ultimately choose, there's a solid chance you're going to want a separate TV streaming box anyway. I'm already pretty frustrated with the leggy interface on the A95K. I didn't notice it that much immediately, but in daily use, it's kind of grinding my gears. So I'm going to pick up a Shield Pro and just throw it in there. Um, I, maybe the LG, it might not bother you, but Tizen is not great on the Samsung. I'd say either the Samsung or the LG at so much lower of a price. But if all things were equal, I would still take the A95K again. It looks so good. Like, it just looks so good. Also, apparently micro HDMI. And this motherboard has Thunderbolt 2, I think. Thunderbolt also, I should say. This motherboard has Thunderbolt. There you go. That could work. Interesting. Now, what's cool is that this motherboard also has a feature that I am super stoked on. See how on the back here, it's got these uh, Type-C outs that you can actually use as display outs, and it has two DisplayPort ports. Those are DisplayPort inputs. And what you do is you go straight from the output of your graphics card, and you input it here. The reason for that is that part of Thunderbolt uh, is being able to run Thunderbolt displays or DisplayPort displays, right? Which is super cool. But that DisplayPort has to be hooked up to something, right? And that something is going to be your onboard video. Unless you can inject a signal from your dedicated graphics card. To be clear, you can still run your dedicated graphics card's power through your onboard output, but there is some performance overhead. So being able to properly run the signal straight out of your GPU into your Thunderbolt output means that you can get the full performance of your dedicated graphics card over that Thunderbolt port. I believe that may actually solve our problem. That is a great, was that a merch message? Uh, no, this, oh. was, uh, this was me saying something different and you knowing what you're talking about. Oh, cool. Uh, but you can thank chat for the, uh, right, the spin-off on that. Um, I've got another one here. This one's actually kind of interesting. Um, stocking up for Christmas. In an ideal world, uh, would manufacturers be perfectly transparent, or would consumers be perfectly educated? Uh, in an ideal world, manufacturers would be perfectly transparent. I, I, like, the, I like the philosophical question. Um, Whoa. In a perfect world, though, yeah, people should be able to trust each other. That's why I lean that way. Uh, you know, obviously, it would be great if, if people were you know, educated, but they shouldn't have to be. I think in, in like your utopia, 
you, you don't have to spend your time learning anything that you don't have to. You should be able to pursue what pleases you. And I don't think anyone necessarily wants to learn everything about everything because they can't trust people. No, I think we should be able to trust manufacturers in a perfect world. It's just often not that simple. Oh, did we get super lucky? Uh, yeah. DisplayPort in and then Thunderbolt out. Perfect. perfect. May yeah, actually do this for us. This, is, this will not. That's, That's the, the only thing, thing that I found. Yeah. Which, Which no. no. That, that weren't going to do it. Yeah. Yep. yep. OK. Oh, well, I was going to suggest that we get a Thunderbolt card. For this, no, nope. we, we don't have need to. Thunderbolt. We got extremely awesome. lucky here. <laughs> um, let's, uh, yeah, hit me with another merch message. Okay, um, any plans for content in the next year or two about what we can do with seventh gen and earlier systems that can't be upgraded to Windows 11? Be great to see ways we can repurpose them without losing security. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good idea. I mean, I think it's just going to end up being the obvious answer, which is install Linux over and over again. So we'd probably only do one video about that. But yeah, I could definitely see us doing a video about that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe we should write, write that down somewhere. Hey, uh, Linus, if you were uh, to have gotten a job in a tech company, what company would you have loved to work for? And what would you have loved to work on? Ah, uh, man. What would I have loved? Who would I have loved to work for? I mean, I don't know who I would have loved to work for. I can tell you who I applied for. I tried to get, oops, I tried to get a job at Amazon before we started Linus Media Group. Uh, they didn't even respond to my application, so I guess that didn't work out. Uh, they also weren't sort of universally regarded as just plain evil at that point. So maybe I dodged a bullet there. I've, I've heard working there it can, be, can be toxic. Um, uh, as for products that I would have loved to work on, you know, I tend to be a little ADD uh, about the, the way that I, I, I learn about things. Like I, I like knowing a little bit about everything instead of absolutely everything about one thing. So I think as a, as a product manager, I actually wouldn't have been very good. I'm also not super organized. Thankfully, I have a team of people who are much more organized than me, and I can rely on them to help, help keep things organized sometimes. Uh, that's a good question. I think that where I could probably be most useful is in software. I see a lot of just obviously worse design uh, in software that could be prevented. You know, a perfect example is we were talking on the WAN show recently about the fact that uh, the, the Google Assistant doesn't even bother to cross-reference against your local contact list that is stored in your phone's local memory when it's trying to resolve a voice match. So if I say, call Yvonne Ho, it'll you know, ask me which Yvonne sometimes, thinking that I said Yvonne home. And it's like, no, no, actually, you should probably just look at that. Or if I say, call James Stribe, it'll say, did you mean? Uh, no, it won't ask, did you mean? It'll just say, sorry, I don't know who that is. And then if I'm like, call James Streeb, it's like, OK. Well, just if you see something pretty close, right? Like, that might be a good idea, but they just don't do that. Um, so yeah, I think I could have been useful there. There, that's my answer. Should we press the power button on this thing before we do another merch message? or? Are you guys ready? What are the odds this thing just powers up, Alex? Uh, pretty good, but we will need to update the BIOS. I feel like we are asking for a lot here, given that we are outputting from this graphics card to the DisplayPort input on our motherboard, and then outputting from that to this USB-C monitor that may or may not be Thunderbolt aware. Uh, <laughs> where's our power button on this thing? OK, it's on. And we're going to use, these are not labeled. Perfect. DisplayPort C1 and C2. Which is which? Nobody knows. Perfect. OK, let's do it. Moment of truth, guys. Hey, it looks pretty cool. No, no, it's not scratched. That's just a little, that's a bit of schmoo. Yeah, that's fine. That comes off. It'll buff right out. <laughs> Okay. 
Uh, yeah, hit me with a merge message. I'm pretty tense right now, but I, I will I will try to respond to it intelligibly. I love LTT videos, and I uh, uh, was wondering if the driver will get an update for the Intel A7070 uh, to make it a great card, or will they just make a better card soon? Oh, it posted. <gasps> I think that I speak for all of us here when I say I'm rooting for Intel. I, I want them to improve this card through drivers. Uh, I also want them to release better cards in the future. I want to see both of those things happen. I don't think anything's a guarantee right now in the tech industry in general. I mean, have you guys seen all the canceled projects, all the layoffs that are going on right now? It's just everything's topsy turvy. So. It's possible they could just walk away. I think the optics of that would be terrible. But if there's a possibility of them walking away, it's obviously a lot better to do it now when the cost of just like, you know, I'd say the most consumer friendly way to do that would be to do a buyback, for example. Just, just, just buy them all back. Be like, sorry, sorry, our bad, forget it. Um, that cost is only going to grow as they sell more and more of these cards into the channel and through OEMs. So if that happens, they're kind of committed, unless they want to just boom, completely bone everyone who early adopted this product, everyone who believed in them. I have a hard time imagining a world where they consider that OK. But hey, sometimes you know, corporation is not your friend, right? OK, I've managed to find my left mouse button. And I am not accurate with this ball mouse thing. <laughs> this is not a good time. XMP is already on, but this is a really old BIOS. Alex, did you by any chance download the latest BIOS when we found out about that? No, I... Dell XPS that I'm not going to be using anymore is dead. Oh, OK, all right. Well, let's see if my laptop's still alive. Oh, no, I, I already knew that. Oh, wow, mine's still alive. OK, well, get wrecked. Should have gone AMD. Let me just go ahead and pull up this uh, other dashboard here. Yep, there we go. All right, cool. I agree, Ethan B. We should totally do a cleanest setup with, uh, with the um, uh, TS4 from CalDigit. That is a sick Thunderbolt dock. Yeah, I have that. Uh, do you have a USB drive? Uh, I do have a USB drive on me. It's in my. Prototype Please. tech pouch. No, it is not. This is my classic USB 2 drive that works with everything. One gig. Uh, what was the model of this motherboard again? Uh, X299 Prime 30 year Asus. That's sick. I can't believe we got resizable bar. That's amazing. I will pull up a couple of merge messages here. With the YouTube premium debate, asks Joseph M, have you considered a cheaper float plane option without premium video quality for those who don't have fast enough internet to benefit from 1440p plus content? Honestly, we haven't. The cheapest option right now on float plane is five bucks, of which, if I recall correctly, it's like close to a dollar goes to payment processing and other like random overhead. So as soon as you start getting into smaller and smaller and smaller transac transactions, the fixed portion of payment processing that is just part of any transaction starts to take up a larger and larger proportion to the point where you're just enriching like banks and financial institutions. Like I don't really think it makes a ton of sense. So. No, I think I think we intend to leave it at 1080p, five bucks, for the for the lowest option. Just pulling up the support page here. Can maybe do a couple more of these. Uh, Anonymous asks, wasn't there supposed to be a video comparing monitor mounts? Been waiting for that before I purchased one. Yeah, there was supposed to be a video comparing monitor mounts. Hey, Alex, can you add that to the list as well, please? Sure. I thought uh, I thought Tan. You know what? That might even be in uh, Tanner's Trello. Got some more here. Austin J. Hey, Linus, you recently mentioned carrying merch and other items from other creators, like the Jerry Rig Everything Razor Knife. Are there plans for more of these items on LTT Store, like uh, Binging with Babish Knife? I would be super down. It's not something that we have started actively pursuing yet, 
but it's absolutely something that we're interested in. Like if another creator has a good product, we don't want to carry anything that sucks on LTT Store because ultimately if you guys are buying it from us, we feel like we owe you something. We owe you some, we have some responsibility to, to vet the products that we're going to carry. Um, otherwise, we're going to end up eating a lot of returns and we're not into that. Uh, so we, we would vet the products, obviously. But if it's a good quality product and they're interested in you know, selling at a wholesale price, but obviously with some, some volume, then yeah. Yeah, we're super into it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and plug that into my front USB 2. This ended up being a reason. Of, okay, I shouldn't say. I'm not going to say sensible, but it ended up being a not completely stupid computer. Not completely stupid. Let's go ahead and. Uh, they should let us $3 grandfathered guys pay yearly just to give less to payment processing. Yeah, it's really complicated, though, setting up annual payments. Uh, there's some there's some technical challenges there. Archive. Uh, Devin Yu, with the expansion into more extensive hardware testing with the new lab, is there any plan to do testing on networking equipment such as switches, access points, routers, etc.? Absolutely. In fact, the video that dropped yesterday was us showing off what was supposed to be a chamber for just that, like an RF testing chamber. Uh, you need a very similar pyramidal foam chamber uh, to what you need for acoustic testing because it will help absorb any, um, any RF waves that hit the walls of the chamber and keep them from bouncing back and interfering with your measurements. So absolutely, we want to know what cell phone has the best 5G reception, for example. It's something that, as far as I can tell, has been completely overlooked for the last five plus years by tech media. And we feel like we can do it. This is interesting. The VGA card is not supported by UEFI driver. Who? OK. Well, that's fine, because hopefully, when we install this new BIOS, it's going to be a little less unhappy about this Arc GPU. Oh my god. OK, I'm just going to use the keyboard for this. This is ridiculous. Tools, Easy Flash Utility 3 via storage device. OK, where are we at? Hey, edition 30, 1403. I want to read this file. Ah, oh, I'm so pleased right now. I mean, I'm, sure I'm not. I am floored, too. That is amazing. Amazing. This monitor may be overpriced, but boy, does it ever look pretty. Gotta love OLED, man. And this has no burn in, by the way, because it's almost new. I only used it a couple of times. Matthew S. asks, thoughts on GPU power? Uh, USB-IF realized they couldn't stay at 5 volt, and power delivery goes up to 48 volt. Is it time for the industry to develop a new power standard? Maybe 48 volt to the GPU, then DC to DC conversion on the board. Yeah, I mean, uh, Intel and some other players have been trying to push that on the motherboard side for quite some time. Not uh, moving on from 12 volt, but getting rid of 5 volt and 3.3 volt from the power supply. Uh, so it's called ATX 12VO, so for ATX 12 volt only. And you just have a 12 volt connection going into the motherboard. And then the motherboard contains the conversion that it needs for any other voltages, which, which it already has to do anyway for things like your CPU and memory and all that. Um, it is more efficient, especially at idle. We did a whole video about it. Man, it must have been like a year or two ago. But industry adoption for new standards is very challenging, especially if the benefit is not one that is easily conveyed to the consumer. I mean, even something like OLED. LG had a lot of marketing behind explaining why it looks so good to have perfect black. And for a long time, people didn't understand it. SSDs, if we want to go back a little bit farther. Uh, it was really hard for, for companies that jumped into the SSD market early to convey how much better they are. So we ended up with kind of meaningless benchmarks like boot time. How often you reboot your computer? Not that often. So who cares is, is what many people thought. But it's not about that. It's about responsiveness, which is really hard to convey with a simple, easy to understand number. So I think that it would be a struggle to get all the industry players on board with a new power supply standard 
that doesn't provide a, a clear benefit to the individual consumer. And right now, the only problems with the current power connectors are the bulkiness and dumbness of the old 6 and 8 pins, so not being able to, to load balance because they don't have those sense pins, and then the fragile little pins in the new 12 volt connector. And that's not a problem for the average consumer, right? Most people don't build their own computer, so what do they care? That's somebody else's problem. That's a technician's problem, right? Like it's in the same way that, you know, for me in a car, right? Like I wouldn't care what hose diameter they use for the water system. If they you know, wanted to change the industry standard for that, I'd be like, you do you. But I wouldn't buy a car based on that they have adopted that new hose standard. I just wouldn't really care. If anything, the fact that it might not be interoperable with all my you know, old or cheap equipment could be a drawback. So pushing forward new standards is tough. It's really tough. Archive. Nathaniel B. asks, do you think having ADHD has had a significant impact on your career? As someone who's gone from a sales to a category management with ADHD, I've often debated the pros and cons of it. Love LTTstore.com. Um, yeah, it's definitely had a significant impact. I, I'd say that one of, the, one of the reasons it's been, I wouldn't say easy, but one of the things that has helped me keep the channel fresh is that I usually get bored before you guys do. Whether it's a new, uh, whether it's a product category or whether it's a, a style of video, I hate doing the same thing twice. So I, like, I just, I can't, I can't focus on it. I just get, I just get bored. So I'm always kind of going off in every different direction, which leads to a lot of new ideas, but also makes it challenging to build a long-term roadmap and stay on it without deviating to, oh, now we're a screwdriver company. Oh, now we host LAN events. Oh, now we do this, now we do that. <laughs> like, we've had some people question, you know, why do you need 80 plus people to make videos? Well, we don't. I mean, the actual departments that make videos are, what, like half the company, maybe? Yeah. And then there's like events and physical goods and accounting and sales and blah, 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 like all this stuff that you just have to build to support it. Uh, archive. Austin H. asks, do any existing 4090s fit in a 4U case? That's actually a really good question and one that I was wondering about for myself. When the 4090s first arrived, I was thinking of upgrading. Uh, a, I get to game at higher FPS, and B, it's really easy content. Speaking of doing the same videos over and over again, uh, I, would, I would be upgrading, in my case, and putting a new GPU in, redoing the water tubing and all that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, it's like super easy content. Um, but I actually have concerns about RTX 4090s fitting in that case. I have not measured any yet, but I use a 4U rack mount case for my gaming rig. And the problem is that many 4090s not only are extremely tall compared to a standard PCI Express slot height, but they have that 12 pin connector sticking out the top, which can't be bent tight, otherwise it could light on fire. So maybe, I don't know, maybe that is a video then. <laughs> Figuring out the challenges of installing an RTX 4090 in a case that doesn't properly support it. Uh, what else we got here? Anonymous asks, any plans to use the lab to test hearing aids? Curious how they stack up against consumer headphones, especially given their $3,000 plus dollar cost. That's really interesting because this is a really good point. We are heading to an intersection between active noise canceling headphone products where they have microphones on the outside, speakers on the inside, the ability to block out outside noises while enhancing the clarity of certain frequencies of, uh, of outside noises, right, for like transparency mode, and hearing aids, which are, oh, designed to do all of those other things and don't even play music. Uh, as commodity earphones get better and better and better and better, are hearing aids going to make any sense at all? Maybe not. We didn't really intend to test that specifically, but it's a cool idea. It's definitely something that's worth considering. Bradley asks, asks if there's an update on the pool slash heatsink thing you were doing. Uh, not yet, but all I need for the next update, the pool's not full, but it is poured. 
So all I need for the next update is a big fat radiator and a fan that I can put in that room uh, where all the computers are, which is freaking hot, OK? And then some water and a pump. And then we could just sink the heat into the concrete, I think. So I want to see if after a couple of hours of running, just running that hot air through the cold water radiator, if we could actually lower the temperature in that room, that'll be the next update. I just need to get my hands on a big fat radiator and a pump, and we could shoot that vlog in an afternoon. So thank you for reminding me. Actually, Alex, do you want to put that down as a, like, hey, this is super cheap, easy content that we need to get done, because also I just want to know if it works. All right. Now, in the long term, we would build up enough heat, because the ground's actually an excellent insulator. So we would build up enough heat that it would stop dissipating, probably. Um, but once the water's in there, I think it would start to dump the heat into the water, and I think it could go for a longer time. But I think what's going to happen is we're going we're gonna to heat soak it after you know, maybe 10 or 12 or 30 hours or something like that. And it's going to stop removing heat. But I think it'll do something, even without the water in the pool. Um, all right. We're in. It no longer says anything about not supporting this particular GPU, which is amazing. And F1 to run setup. I think we are totally ready to go. This is so unreal that we managed to build a compatible computer with, did we need any compatibility rerolls, Alex? What happened with the cooler again? I forget. Oh, we did. We did. We needed a compatibility reroll on the cooler, but that was it. Everything else managed to actually work. How cool is that? Well, I don't know. I'm impressed. I was genuinely impressed. Oh, the keyboard. Oh, yeah, we had to reroll the keyboard because oh, yeah. of compatibility. Yeah. Man, that thing is stupid. That's really stupid. Mat Matthias Laptop Pro. You do not want it. Anonymous says, keep on keeping on, brother. I spend the majority of my PC build on, oh, I spent the majority of my time building my PC on where to connect cables to the motherboard. Any plans on videoing or commenting on wiring to the motherboard? The video you need is how to build a PC, the last guide you'll ever need. That was a multi-month production endeavor for us, but it covers everything. Absolutely everything. Yeah, there's a video where I say, oh, this is going to be coming soon, get subscribed. And it was seven months until it was actually released. Yeah. However, the video is great. It's got like over five million views now, in spite of being almost two hours long. Really? But it's not yeah, it's not intended to be consumed in one sitting. It's intended to be a reference that you can go back to. So you can go back to the chapters that you need uh, when it's time to shop for RAM or time to shop for a GPU. Or, or if you're building an entire computer, it is the one, the one thing you need to know everything to make a good decision. It doesn't tell you the answers. It doesn't tell you buy this motherboard, because that becomes outdated. It tells you how to choose the right motherboard for you. Archive. Uh, James N says, hey, guys. Got an X Mining 3090 for 800 bucks and ended up upgrading to the 5800X 3D. Uh, I can finally use my full 1080p 240 hertz monitor. Uh, oh, OK. I don't know why this was curated. Cool story, bro, James. Uh, I'm going to uncurate this one. Uh, normally, that would be the kind of thing that we would just uh, have you know, flash onto the, onto the stream. Uh, there you go. I'll click Show. Um, Oh my goodness, now that we're doing more of these, people are sending in a ton of stuff. Michael H. says, been a huge fan for several years, still waiting on some legit LTT merch that was featured in the bootleg merch video, like the Linus face underwear. You'll be waiting a long time. Uh, any Linus meme face stuff that we have, yeah, do you want to do that actually while I do this? Uh, any Linus meme face stuff that we've had on the store officially, honestly hasn't sold amazing, so I don't think we're going to pursue too, too much of that. Uh, Kyle D asks, should I get a 4K 60 hertz monitor or 1440p 144 hertz? We did a whole video called 4K Gaming is Dumb. It contains the answer. In fact, the title contains the answer. If you're a gamer, 1440p 144 hertz every single time. Antonio P, what was your favorite PC you ever used? So many people ask me this, right? But it's complicated because 
I, I have only, I've only built one PC, if you kind of understand what I mean. It's the PC of Theseus, right? Like every single component has changed multiple times, but I have never actually upgraded the entire thing. I still have thumb screws in my current case that are from probably about 2007, right? They're perfectly good thumb screws. Thumb screws don't go bad in 15 years, do they? No. And they're really, they're really nice. They're, they're stylish. They're from the Antec P160. And they have like this cool aluminum outside, and, and, but still a ferrous core, so you can still uh, put them on your magnetic screwdriver. Uh, but they just they look really cool because they have like an aluminum outside. I like the white, the white um, luster of, of aluminum. So my computer is my favorite computer. And it's changed a lot over the years to make it more favoriter every time. I do still have my TJ07 case. Uh, someone in Twitch chat asked about it. I, I want to do something with it, but I don't need more than one computer, so I don't really know what to do with it. I want to rack mount. I want to rack mount everything. For me, it was definitely the first one that I built when I got here. 1080 plus a 5960X was insane. It's the sort of thing where, like, I went to that and I was like, ah, I'm mad because I'm so much more competitive at games now. And now I have to upgrade I, my rig at home. No, like, that's what I upgraded my rig at home to. Oh. Uh, I just beat all my personal bests in dirt, and I'm worse at this game now by a lot. Like, I haven't played it in months. <laughs> it can... Okay, a better PC won't make you a better gamer. I want to make that very clear, but it will allow you to be the best gamer you can be. Oh, apparently you can't hear Alex. So he's talking about when he upgraded to, uh, what was it, a 5600X? Uh, and a 5960X. A 5960X and a 1080. That was probably on Super Special from the, uh, the staff store, I would think. Yeah, that was back when I think one day you just got really mad about how dirty it was in here. And you just like yeeted stuff at people. That doesn't really happen anymore. <laughs> There's too many people. I know. <laughs> you can't, like... You're just like, oh, this PC case was a fish tank. I don't want to deal with it. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, Samuel asks, is there any word on those fancy magnetic wire routing things you demoed in an earlier video? Uh, yes, we actually, I think, have our PO placed for magnets. Uh, hey, guess how much we're spending on neodymium magnets? Those are very expensive, so a lot. Um, how many are you making? Uh, I, th I think we're making tens of thousands of the things. Okay, and each one's probably, what, like two, three dollars? So that's like fifty, sixty thousand dollars on magnets. Um, three hundred grand. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because we have to do the, the. They're not just like a magnet. Yeah, it's like a special. <laughs> it's two magnets, and then there's a special core piece that we have to put in to make sure that when you pull the cable management thing off, the magnet doesn't stay behind because they're super strong. Yeah, and it does that also so that like the magnetic field doesn't go the wrong way. Yeah, it like yeah. optimizes the shape of it. It's, it's actually it's super cool. Uh, they are coming, but the lead time on magnets I think is three to six months, and then we still need to actually assemble them with the plastic housings and package them and ship them over here. So sometime next year. Jeremy J says I have an actual tech question. I have a Thunderbolt monitor and an AMD-based system. Ryzen 7 3700X, Gigabyte X570 motherboard, and a 6700 XT GPU. Can I add a Thunderbolt PCI card to the system for video? Probably not. There are a handful of AMD motherboards that do support Thunderbolt. Uh, one of them, you actually probably saw in a, in a video update from me maybe a year or two ago, is from ASRock. It's their Aqua X570. It actually does have the, the thing that I showed you guys earlier, the Thunderbolt or the DisplayPort input from your GPU. And they, they did put, at the time, Intel was the only one who made Thunderbolt chips. They did put an Intel chip on their AMD motherboard to support Thunderbolt. But very, very, very few motherboards have supported it. The Gigabyte um, TRX, STRX40 uh, Design Air board that I'm using now is another AMD board that does support Thunderbolt. But in order for that PCIe card to work, your motherboard has to have support for it. And so the manufacturer has to 
think ahead to that and build it in. Is there anything here we should be talking to people about, or are we just uh, like putting drivers on? For one, this trackball is god awful, and I hate it. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, sweet. Uh, I think that the display drivers installed enough that I can see Chrome now. That was a bit of an issue. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right. Well, he's he's working on that. I still have a few more of these. Uh, Shane P asks, now that LTT has had as much success as it has, do you still uh, get the same sticker shock when buying things for the channel labs that you may have when you started? Oh, 100%. It's just orders of magnitude more now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were just talking about that. Like, yes, I get sticker shock. OK, like this is, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to talk about this stuff. Because I feel like when I, when I, when I do, people, whether it's intentionally misrepresenting what I'm trying to say or, or I don't know, people just get mad about stuff. Um, but it's hard for me to talk about how much things cost when you're running a business without some people saying like, uh, uh, humble brag or flexing or whatever else. But like, okay, this is something I got literal sticker shock from. Um, when the Creator Labs team placed a PO for a year's worth of free sticker packs for oh. LTT store orders. It was over $100,000 of stickers. I think it was about 150 grand. Oh. And I was like, how could you possibly spend 100 and whatever thousand dollars on stickers? And they're like, well, it's a lot of them. It's all the orders for an entire year. Every order gets a pack of stickers. And I'm like, oh, wow. So yeah, yes. Yes, I do, I do still get sticker shock. Um, when I found out how much those magnets were going to cost, yeah. Yeah, I got sticker shock. And it was worse a year ago when neodymium prices were like this. Literally, the line looks like this. And it has started to settle down in recent months. But it was, it was like, right as we started developing the My First PC project that was actually what morphed into the cable management project, long story there, uh, we were just basically watching the product become non-viable in front of our very eyes as neodymium prices went through the roof. <laughs> like, the, the best possible investment I could have made, like, three or four years ago would have been a warehouse full of neodymium. <laughs> oh, did you enable rebar? Oh, crap. Oh, I don't think I did. OK, I'll do it later. I'm sorry. Yeah, my bad. Uh, yeah, so I get the same sticker shock, but it's for much bigger numbers. Like, back when Alex first started, I would have flipped out about $1,000 that we were spending on a testing tool. I'd been like, do we really need this? Like, can you think of anything like that? Uh, there was the benchtop power supply, where I was like, Linus, we need a benchtop power supply. That's good. It's so useful, and we use it all the time. And you're like, it's $600. Why? Yeah, we have lots of power supplies. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. Whereas now, uh, Labs asked me today, or not Labs, Creator Warehouse asked me today for a, I, I forget if it was 20 or 30,000, because my brain kind of jammed for a little bit there. But it was either a twenty or thirty thousand dollar SLA three D printer. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the, it's like the one. Apparently, it doesn't have a huge print volume, but they're like, yeah, we can do with this. And then they also want a desktop injection molding machine so that they can prototype uh, like molds, essentially. Oh. Um, and it's like. It would be so sick, though. Right. So yeah, you're not the only one to say that. They're like, yeah, we literally have like three products that we cannot continue development on until we buy this. It's like, oh. It's all up front, right? Like, obviously, the idea is that it pays for itself when you release a product. And it's like, yay, successful. And like, you know, right, like, it's, yeah, the system works. But until that time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all a die roll, right? And we've seen that that can go very well and also very poorly. <laughs> um, Bruce asks, will Labs or you review your SVS speakers? I know they sponsored them, but I'm considering getting them. But they're very expensive. Keep up the great stuff. I think that would be super cool. I don't know that we would review them. But what we will do is, um, oh, Dan's, Dan's not producing anymore right now. It's Chase over there right now. What we will do for sure is we are going to be sound treating the theater uh, with our upcoming acoustic panel product. And when we do that, we're going to be taking measurements in the room 
both before and after, and I see no reason why we couldn't yeah, that's get the data. Yeah, just a response curve for you guys for the entire setup. It wouldn't be for just two speakers or whatever, because the lab is going to have their own room for testing all that stuff. And quite frankly, I am so tired of pulling stuff out of my house, bringing it to the office so that people can test it, and then for them to like never return it or bring it back damaged or whatever else. So I'm not bringing them in. But we can get you that data in a reasonably sound controlled room. And uh, hopefully that's going to be coming in the next, not soon, but probably the next six to 10 months. Um, that's another product that I'm super, super excited about. It's, I can't, I don't have too much detail to share yet, but I think, have you seen it? Uh, no. What I think it is, is bridging the gap between DIY, right, which is typically just like insulation in a two by four or two by six frame or, or one by, like one by frame, uh, then with just like, you know, uh, fabric wrapped around it and pinned at the back, right? You just kind of DIY the mounting. Yeah. So somewhere between DIY, which can be great performance, but is like kind of a hassle. And then, you know, premium acoustic panels, which definitely perform well. Oh, have you seen those ones that you can like print on? Yeah, they're, they're so cool. They're super cool products out there. So ours will be a little bit DIY, some assembly required but we believe we can get very, very close to like, proper product performance out of it and no tools. So oh, that's, cool. that's the big one, is you can go to the store and buy your own material. So you could use ultra touch batting, you could use rock wool, you could, you could use whatever you want, mm -hmm. and you can assemble the whole thing, no tools required, unless you'll need to cut whatever insulation material. That's, that's on you. Um, but we will also provide panels, like, like stuffing, if people want it. So I'm super, super, super excited about it. I feel about ready to game here. Are we? Are we yeah. really? Sick. Uh, chipset drivers and everything? Mm, maybe. Yeah, maybe just give a quick check to device manager. This mouse is terrible. I hate it so much. I was thinking maybe it was just really bad because you're in BIOS and sometimes mouse control in BIOS kind of sucks. But this looks like I can see. I can see your finger moving and I can see the cursor just being like. Yeah, and I've turned down the sensitivity and turned down or turned off acceleration. That helped. But it's still awful. It's so bad. Just looks jittery as heck. I don't remember what I was doing. Uh, right click here, device manager. Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, uh, what's right click? Uh, uh. Brady T asks, would it be possible for you to do a video about what I should put in my LTT backpack as a start out IT guy? Tools, flash drives, etc. I actually did a what's in my bag video a little while back, but honestly, I think that's the kind of thing that you're going to figure out on your own in time. Uh, you know, some side cutters, some needle nose pliers, uh, extra screws, just having some thumb, some thumb screws, some M3s, some 632s, just in case something's missing. Um, you know, I always like to have some extra, like, PCI slot covers, just in case, you know, you run into a system that is, you're going to have to pull a card out and it's just, like, not going to have, you know, I like to put something in there, put in a screw. Uh, some thermal compound, one of every cable, display port, HDMI. Um, you know, USB, X to Y, like all the different kind of combinations, uh, Ethernet, you know, you just, just all those little things that you, that you might end up needing. And realistically, you're going to find your own list of things that you need. I mean, one of the ones that I never go anywhere without, you guys saw today. It's my one gig. This is the upcoming uh, LTT tech pouch, by the way. Actually, here, we'll give uh, Andrew something to do for a change. Um, so this is my, my one gig thumb drive that just has excellent compatibility, works with everything. Every once in a while, you'll see USB 3 drives that like, won't work properly on a USB 2 board and stuff like that. I've got a USB-C 2.5 gig network card from Framework, um, my needle nose pliers. Oh, one of those cable management. Oh, no, this is, a, this is a mic holder, actually. I thought it was one of our cable management arch prototypes, but it's not. Uh, USB-C to HDMI, USB, Ethernet, SD card, dongle. Uh, jeweler screwdrivers, just in case. A USB sound card. You know, you never know. You might need sound to diagnose something. And then I've also got a breakout cable for it. So a four-pole to dual three-pole. 
so that I can uh, have sp speakers and mic. Uh, Molex pin removal tool. There's an ATX from pin removal tool in there somewhere. Uh, just a you know big fat external drive, just in case you need to dump a bunch of data off of something. Um, USB-C to A, you know, just like little little things, little things. My my kit, honestly, is nowhere near as complete, a couple extra drives, as it used to be. Like back when I did a lot more tech work day to day, like when I was working at NCIX. Um, I have actually some remnants of my old kit upstairs, but I would have like a 3 8 inch and a half inch water cooling fitting, you know, a little bit of tubing, um, various cutters. Uh, I keep iodine in there and fill a water cooling loop just uh, little tiny heat sinks with some thermal adhesive you know if you've got a system that's having some kind of a stability problem because you have uh, you know like a little chip that's overheating I would have a quick and easy way to fix that um, you know a couple little tiny fans for much the same purpose you'll you'll figure it out you'll figure it out I believe in you archive Colin asks, can we get an update on black shaft screwdrivers? Yeah, we're expecting them to start shipping sometime in the next week. If not, then two weeks. We did say black shaft screwdrivers would be delayed compared to the silver ones, and that is true. But the Wave 1 ones should start shipping quite shortly. It's that the plating takes extra time. That's it. Because they all start out as silver shaft, except that the black shaft ones need to be manufactured ever so slightly smaller so that when they get the coating, they are exactly the right size. Did you know this comes out? Oh. Does it fit in there? Sorry, yeah. <laughs> no, I did not know it comes out. That's very interesting. Samuras so asks, when are you going to do the ARC challenge? Well, I'm afraid I simply can't, because I gave away our A770. Or sold it for a dollar. Uh, we, we have a bunch more. We have loads. Why are you going to be like that, Alex? We have more than enough. Why are you going to be like that? You can do it. I haven't started it yet. Uh, we will. What's the ARC challenge? Luke and I have to switch to ARC in our daily driver gaming rigs for a month. Wow, that sounds horrible. Yeah. And then if. You can't play Halo. I know. If we, don't, if we don't keep it, then there's a punishment. I think it was like to dye our hair or shave our heads or something. Yeah. Day one. Yeah, we talked about it on WAN show. Well, <laughs> I, I, uh, it was a bad punishment. And also, I just hate losing to Luke at anything. We're very competitive. I guess, do you guys normally game together? Yeah. So at least you'd like be able to bond over your lack of being able to play the games. Yeah, but one stipulation was that every PC in my house had to be ARC. So I wouldn't be able to get around it on my VR setup. Or like, oh. like I, so if I wanted to play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with the kids, I would be playing on ARC in the theater room, like... And you would just be there, like, in VR, and then the frame times would dip, and then you'd be like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, that sounds brutal. Yeah, and I also game with the kids, right? So they might want to play some random game, and it might not run very well, and that's uh, frustrating. I know I've been kind of hard on ARC here. I feel like I was one of the ones that was the most, like, I want this to happen. Then we did that live stream, and a lot of my... Ugh. Yeah, his enthusiasm <laughs> evaporated. There was something about Master Chief Collection, not being able to play that, really got me. Like, you just can't. Rocket League, you probably can if you, like, frame limit it. But, like, yeah, Master I... Chief Collection. That's pretty rough. There was a bunch more ones, too, but... Thought Criminal on Twitch asks, uh, is it possible LTT would venture into game development? If, doesn't it feel like you know, every influencer wants to become a game developer or like game publisher? Why would you want to do that? If you think a screwdriver is a high risk, up, high upfront <laughs> investment, maybe won't pay off business endeavor, game development is that times a hundred. Man, developing a good game with like few bugs, right? It's a three to five year endeavor these days. That's three to five years that you need to pay, 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 pay. And at the end, you'll basically have a handful of Twitch streamers and game reviewers that decide if it will succeed or not. And it's like, whoa! Sorry, why does anybody do this? <laughs> That's one of the things that I like about what we do the most. 
because like we put in like I feel like you never know how well a video is going to do. Yeah. Like you're kind of just you. There's the occasional video where you're like, this one's a banger. This is gonna go viral. Yeah. But most of them. Or this one is not good. Um, yeah. I wish we had done better, but it's done now. <laughs> but for most of them, it's kind of like, where will it land? I don't know. And then it goes up and you're like, oh, it's one one Fantastic. I didn't think people would like this. Or it's like, this is the best video we've made. And the comments are like, this is the best video we've made in months. And nobody's watching yeah, it. Yeah, and no one watches it. Yeah. <laughs> it is amazing, amazing how often that happens. <laughs> where like it'll have a 99 plus percent like dislike ratio and the comments are great and it's like the tenth when he said one out of ten uh, one means like the best performing out of your last ten it's a metric that YouTube has in the creator studio so th this one that people love will be like a ten out of ten which sounds good but is bad it means it's the worst performing video yeah. out of your last ten and it's so frustrating because a lot of the time that's when we get into like really technical stuff and we have like a super straightforward non-clicky title and people are like happy but they're not watching it it's like okay yeah so game yeah. development's that but over the course of 5 years <laughs> yeah <laughs> way more expensive <laughs> Whew, yeah no i'm i'm not 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 into it uh, yes, you are going to be seeing some more Intel Extreme Tech upgrades soon. Uh, Nicholas D asks, been following since 2012. Why is my email banned from Twitch chat? Also had to use incognito to get merge messages since I'm a shop user. Do you know what shop user means? No. I'm not sure what shop user means. But uh, as for why you're banned from Twitch chat, chat, I don't know, probably... It could be anywhere from you were a bad person and did something extremely bad all the way to a moderator accidentally misclicked. We don't really have, I, yeah, I realized, uh, at our size, we should probably have like a community manager or something at some point. That seems like a role. I mean, between the forum and like everything else. Can we just tag that on to Chase's titles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chase, you're not doing that much, right? <laughs> Guys, like, I'm trying to plan a balls whole event deep here. in planning LTX 2023 right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, I'm not sure why, Nicholas D. Zach asks, uh, why are the hoodies made from such rough fabric? The WAN hoodie and short circuit hoodie are not even close to what I would consider soft. Okay, so there's a couple things. It's French terry, and it's a personal preference thing. I love French terry. I don't actually like that fleecy brushed uh, interior, which is the only difference. It's exactly the same fabric, but the difference is that after uh, knitting it, they use like a metal brush and brush it to get that soft feel. I don't like that. That makes my skin feel icky. However, for people like you, we do have another option, and it's the Stealth Hoodie Pro. It is extremely soft hand touch, and I think that you will like it a lot more. Um, I prefer the French Terry. I also, I don't like having things right against my skin because I find it's too hot. So um, having the French Terry brings it off your skin a little bit, which from my experience helps with like breathability while still maintaining warmth. Uh, that's why they are the way they are. It's not uh, a cost savings. It costs exactly the same. I just personally prefer that finish. Oh, Shopify shop pay user. Oh, okay, yeah, that is, that is a thing. That's a bug that I think we have the potential to fix, but certainly is not fixed yet. Steven, Steph, Steve, Steven B. Boo Antoine, <laughs> but the new Waterborne looks sick. Uh, did you know Jay made a charter that looks like you in the Ghostbusters game on his stream last night? No, I did not know that, but it sounds like the kind of thing that Jay would do. That's terrific. Uh, Anonymous asks, have you taken a look at Smart Home Everything's Episode 1 sensor, or EP1 sensor? May be useful to look at for your switch woes. No, I haven't. I might have to have a look. What I'm really hoping is that either um, Jasco actually just announced 
that they are now like Home Assistant integration, like certified or whatever, like works with Home Assistant, which is so cool how much good came out of that negative experience that I had with their product. Um, so what I'm hoping is that my Jasco switches are going to start working perfectly once I update to the latest Home Assistant. Failing that, I'm hoping that Inavelli comes through with a super amazing millimeter wave presence detecting smart switch. If not, uh, EP1 wow. sensor. 613. Oh, yeah, we should get going soon. Yeah. Uh, how's, how's this going? Um, uh, I'm having trouble installing the uh, chipset drivers. Ah. Armory crates kind of being not the most stable. Armory Crate can be just kind of a butthead. Why don't you just grab it off of the product page? Yeah, that's about where I'm at. OK, cool. We'll try this once more. Cool. Download and install. Come on, Armory Crate. You can do it. Cannot run on your PC. Fantastic. Ah. OK. It's weird. But this is Windows 10, right? Uh, yep. OK. Well. <laughs> Wow, you can really tell it's an OLED as soon as the screen goes full white. The dimming yeah. to protect itself kicks in. <laughs> that is that is not very bright. <laughs> I don't know how to scroll on this. Do you, do you have any ideas? Alex, I do not. Oh, is that, that's the one you cannot? Maybe you could hold a button? I've And then, I've yeah, maybe there's that. like a shift scroll or something. Here, um, keyboard. Oh, that works. I mean, it's stupid, but yeah, it works. Oh, I've turned down the sensitivity somehow. <laughs> Where were we? So Chipset's the only chip one we we'll care yeah. about. Uh, ME might also be missing, but yeah, I would just try chipset. All right. I've got a few more of these to make my way through. Archive that. Uh, oh, right, the EP1 sensor. I was going to take a look at this. The Everything Presence 1, available for pre-order now. Oh, OK, it's millimeter wave for accurate presence detection, uh, temperature, humidity sensor, for climate monitoring, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, direct integration through Home Assistant. It's the sensor I always wanted for my own smart home and now finally exists. Oh, that's super cool. I would prefer something that is integrated into switches that I already have. So I think I'm going to probably pass on that for now. But that would be a, an excellent retrofit. Um, does one of you want to go? Like, are I, uh, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, yeah, why don't you, why don't you head out? Sure. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah, this has been a long stream, guys. Uh, yeah, Alex might have to also go at some point. Fortunately, it's at 7.30, but it's in downtown. OK. It's with the Mega Pro people. Oh, really? Sold 100,000. Did we move through the whole 100,000? Yeah. Wow. Were you not invited? Uh, no. That's awkward. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alrighty then. Uh, that, that, is, that is truly a little awkward. Yes. <laughs> Um, archive. Thomas S. asks, uh, with Alienware having an OLED ultra-wide, do you think OLED will start kicking off more in the monitor space and become more cost-effective? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Riley B. Not sure if you've seen yet, but the current most plausible theory on 4090's melting is that it's a quality control issue with the included NVIDIA splitters. The solder joints can fracture easily where the wires join the 12 volt bus at the pins. Interesting. I mean, hmm, OK. Yeah, I could see that. Super skinny wires, super skinny connectors. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Chris E says, with Intel's fairly strong ray tracing performance on their first gen and AMD on second gen. How long do you think it will be until ray tracing is the standard method of lighting in video games? Oh my goodness. Long time. Standard method, maybe 10 years? Yeah. Because realistically, it's not going to happen as long as this console generation, which has craptastic ray tracing performance, is relevant. Like, not just current, but relevant. So by the time we finally get to the point where no new games are being developed for this generation, the series and the PS5, maybe. 
So I guess first thing, 3060 has to become like the standard low end card. Uh -huh. It can't be the 1060 anymore. Yeah. Which is kind of happening. Yeah, but like. It's going to be, you always want to design for the lowest common denominator, right? Like as a game developer, you want the, the largest yeah. possible user base. And one of the benefits of ray traced lighting is that theoretically it is, it is easier, actually, from a development standpoint. Because all you have to do is put in light sources and specify what materials in the, in the game are made of, and the light will just naturally work, right? Theoretically, that's way easier than having all of these like fake lights and like BS reflections and all of that stuff. But the problem is that you have to do all of that conventional lighting work anyway now to maintain compatibility with every other card that can't run ray tracing for crap. So if you have to do all that work anyway, actually ray tracing is extra work because you have to do this and this is optional. Whereas if you could build your game from the ground up, with everything physics-based, all the lighting, all the collisions, just everything physics-based, that actually would be easier, but only if you could rely on every piece of hardware that will run the game to meet that bar. So if we see that on the PlayStation 6 and you know, whatever the next Xbox is called, the Xbox Donkey Punch, like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, their names make no sense. <laughs> what game do you want to play? Um, I mean, I think if we don't play Counter-Strike, we are, we are doing the people a disservice with this excellent, sensible trackball mouse. All right, I think it's time. I'm saying 10 years for games that do not support non-ray traced lighting. Uh, Ari W asks, when are LTX tickets going up? How big will it be? We're flying from East Coast US. Hey, Chase, you're better qualified to answer this than anyone. Uh, we don't have an exact date for tickets going on sale, but it should be soonish. I want to say in the next couple months or so. We still got some stuff we got to figure out, and we're trying to get the website like perfect. <laughs> How big will it be? Uh, it's going to be bigger than the previous uh, LTX 2019. So we've rented out the Vancouver Convention Center, the West Hall, and we now have over 100,000 square feet, whereas I think LTX 2019 had like 75,000, so it's, it's a big bump. You know, we're really going big on this one. Cool. Uh, and is it worth coming out from the East Coast? Totally worth it. You gotta be there. There you go. Make a trip out of it though. Like, don't just come for LTX. Vancouver's a beautiful city in the summer. Uh, come hang out, you know? Go on some, go do the grouse grind. Yeah, I- That's definitely the Want to do. Yeah. I think we're, I, I don't know, I don't have any confirmations what? on this, but I think we are going to try and uh, talk to some different like Vancouver tourism groups and maybe see if there's like anything we can suggest to oh. people who are coming out and try and make a trip out of it. That'd I don't cool. know if we can get deals or anything, but we might at least to our audience be like, hey, like make a trip if you are traveling. Yeah. You know, Vancouver's great. Um, the greater Vancouver area, and there's some really cool stuff around. So uh, we want to try and give people some more to do, but we know it's not. Not everyone's going to be able to do that, and it might not be something we can like line up yeah. for everything. So it'll at least be fun. We'll try and get some info out there at the very least. Yeah, yeah, deals would be great. Um, also, Alex, what was wrong with the gross grind? The gross grind is awesome. Well, the gross grind is awesome, but you have to remember that like there are a lot of people that live places that don't have hills, and do not oh. realize that like 800 meters of elevation will murder someone that like doesn't exercise. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I remember the first hike that me and Sarah did when we came out here was the Squamish Chief. And we were just like, oh, it says it's medium difficulty. We'll just go up that. And it's like, nope, it's stairs for 700 meters. You just go up them. <laughs> There's grandmothers just like walking past us. And we're like, damn it. This is harder than anything we've ever been on. <laughs> uh, I feel like hiking, though. Great. Game. Uh, oh, man. Hold on a second. Enabled. Oh, I hate this mouse with every inch of my being. Okay. We have an FPS counter. Are we running at 4K right now? If we're going to game, we're going to game at the maximum resolution of our monitor. Yep. We're running at 4K, 130 FPS. Huh? It's 
Oh! oh! <laughs> it is very stuttery. Um, oh. oh, I got one. Hashtag Intel R. How, the, how are you supposed to move the ball? It takes up precious fingers. Who are the people gaming on this thing? Like, I, I actually do get it being really quick to flick to a point, actually. Um, what, like, what finger am I supposed to be using? Is it middle? What is happening right now? Uh, yes, we enabled rebar, actually. Alex went back and enabled rebar. Um, this is our best case scenario here. Oof. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we can tilt the screen. Also, this keyboard is horrible. This is the mushiest feeling garbage I can recall encountering ever. And it's so easy to misclick. Whoa. The, the ball is like, watch this. I gotta like flick it now. I think I must have hit a sensitivity toggle or something. I think it's the middle one on the right. The middle one on the, oh my gosh. Oh, whoa, yeah, okay. So that's like a sniper, but oh, that, oh. This jitter though is nasty. Like part of it is the ball mouse just being like really awful to move. But part of it is this Intel Arc GPU. Oh no, 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 I got him, I got him. But no, but Wesley got me. We did not build a very good gaming computer today. Hey, DirectX 12, it might work well. Uh, okay. This is one of our worst case scenario games. Sure. Let's go ahead and try one other game. Let's give it another chance. One more chance. Hey, it is dead freaking quiet though. And the monitor looks great. Doesn't support HDR, mind you, but, but hey, you know, it's vibrant. Okay, perfect black. <laughs> I don't know, what do, you, do you want cyberpunk? Sure. Here comes cyberpunk. What could go wrong? Uh, continue with that account. Let's try and blitz through a handful more merch messages. We're not taking any new ones, though. No new ones. Tim W. Oh, do, do we have to go? You were supposed to leave. You were supposed to be there at 6 o'clock. Oh, no. I totally forgot. Um, oh no. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. I guess. They're in the car. Yeah, okay, give me like, give me like four minutes. Okay. And then, yeah, I definitely have to go. Uh, Tim W, heard the question about hearing aids, LTT lab, what about home automation tech? It's gonna be a relatively low priority to start with. But obviously, you know, we'd love to in the longer term. Matthew T, have you considered adding a virtual hybrid component to LTX? Not really. It's, it's designed as, a, as an in-person event. I think that there could be some ways to participate virtually, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same. That was why we kibosh doing virtual LTX in 2020. Mark A, I have some unique, cool, older hardware. How would I go about sending it in to possibly have you make a video about it? Now you can DM me on the forum if it's like super cool. Yeah, it might be worth borrowing or something like that to check out. Andrew P, X99 can support rebar with BIOS mods. With rebar on every modern major GPU, uh, any interest in coverage of legacy rebar support, both official and unofficial? Um, if ARC was better, I would say yes. But even with rebar, it's... Yeah, like you just saw CS go. Yeah, it's a pretty tough sell. So, I, yeah, I, I think it's... Maybe not that relevant of a conversation. Uh, Dennis M, I love the LTT PC hardware drop, scored a 5900X and a tough 6800 XT that I painted the shroud on. Do you think a Radeon 7000 will be worth the upgrade? I have no idea. There's no point in me speculating on GPUs that aren't out yet. Sorry. Uh, Michael K, is a server mount rack the same width as a rack mounted outboard audio gear? Uh, usually, uh, yes. Typically, yes, but there are different rack widths. Oh, I just accidentally pressed show on one. That might have been a question. I'm sorry, I missed you. 
Uh, I'm rock oh, here it is. I'm rocking older parts due to a surge wiping out my rig, but need a GPU. Found a brand new inbox power color Red Devil Vega 64 for 200 US dollars. Did I get burned? Um, not as badly as we got burned on this. I'd say 200 bucks for that is mm, uh, Vega. It's not the greatest. This is not very good. Um, yeah, this is a. Uh... This would be better without motion blur, honestly. Um, Are you sure? This has got to be like 8 FPS, 10 maybe. I was going to say 12. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's Ooh, at 4K. And like, the, and like the time is not correct either. Like, oh, my, like the physics are wrong? Yeah, like my inputs are not when I'm inputting. Cool. And like the fastness of my car was like changing. Cool. <laughs> Patrick. Uh, hey guys, cannot overstate the appreciation. If you could give one piece of uh, advice for how to go about solving a problem, what would it be? Ooh, okay. I mean, my advice, you know what? You should watch the um, Linus V. Anthony troubleshooting stream. I show my approach to problem solving in more depth there than I could possibly cover now. Francis, will you ever do your music production benchmarks? Yes, yes, we want to, but we haven't yet. As for what CPU I would recommend, I would have to wait until we actually have benchmarks to run. Amanda, my backpack just arrived. You mentioned the straps being able to tow a car. I'm going to test it. Will the lab beat me to it? Only one way to find out. Um, I would say don't do that because we tried to do it, and there's no really good place to attach the other end. So don't. <laughs> we learned that the hard way. The handle on the top. Yeah, probably is strong enough if you started out slow enough and it was a reasonable sized car, but I wouldn't attach it anywhere else. Uh, Ken, would you recommend the use of surplus 4KN data center hard drives for a first time NAS build? I don't see why not. If they're super cheap and they're still in good shape, because that's the thing, is used hard drives I generally don't recommend. Uh, Chat saying leave. OK, all right. We saw Cyberpunk. It runs at 1440p just fine. 4K, no. All right. Thanks, Jordan H. Uh, thanks, Jackson S. Thanks, Jack. Um, <laughs> Alex. Did he do FreshBooks? Oh, have you done FreshBooks sponsor? Holy smokes. I haven't thanked our sponsor, FreshBooks. <laughs> oh, boy. FreshBooks is the accounting software that's built for small business owners. Would you rather be focused on the part of your business you actually enjoy or bogged down with annoying accounting stress? Hey, Vaughn, how's annoying accounting stress treating you? I want to stop the Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Whether you own your own business or you're a freelancer, FreshBooks makes invoicing and accounting on your own easier and more efficient. Their automated system streamlines building and sending invoices, processing payments, and managing business expenses. FreshBooks even integrates with over 100 different apps, making connecting with your clients and your team smooth and simple. It's simple to start, but even when hiccups happen, their award-winning support team is always there to help. So start your 30-day trial for free, no credit card required, by going to freshbooks.com slash Linus. So you can step away from number crunching and get back to your business. Uh, thanks, Thomas H. Thanks, Mark G. Uh, that might actually happen, Mark G. No promises, though. Thanks, Clark M. Uh, could use the help. No, no. Crossfire or like whatever between integrated graphics and dedicated graphics has been tried and failed and tried and failed, and it's not going to happen, Clark. Uh, finally, Kyle P. Thanks. Cool. And oh, am I the one who has to cut it? I'll cut it. You'll cut it. 